DeSoto and the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers from Coast to Coast present Groucho Marx. In You Bet Your Life. Here he is, the one, the only... Well, here I am again with a chance for each of our couples to win up to $10,000. And if any of them say the secret word, they'll win an extra $100. Roger, we have Constance Watt and Pat DeLeone now waiting to talk to you. cut out the clowning and give us the names of these people. What? No, no, don't you start that <laughs> Abbott and Costello routine. Uh, we have Constance Watt. Well, who's on first? This is the... <laughs> well, welcome to your bet your life. Well, that's Pat DeLeone and, and yes. Constance Say Watt. Say the secret uh, word uh, and you make an extra... Take home an extra $50. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Constance Watt and Pat DeLeone. Is that right? Yes, now, Connie, you. I'll start with you because I, I uh, want to find out what's what. Now, where are you from? Uh, well, Groucho, I'm from... Uh, what's that? I'm from Aberdeen. Oh, I thought that was him talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Aberdeen, Scotland, Groucho. You're, you're from Scotland, oh. Uh, that's the, the city where uh, Alexander Fleming, the man that discovered penicillin, and um, it's also called the Granite City because the buildings are all more or less uh, <clears throat> made of granite. And it's called also the Silver City by the Sea. I see. Well, it's got a lot of names, huh? <laughs> Does, let me ask you something, Connie. Does your husband also have a bar? He uh, most certainly has. Uh, uh, and is uh, it as delightful as yours? Oh, more so. You both more have burrs, so. eh? <laughs> well, you know what they say about the Scotch? Burrs of a feather stick together. <laughs> Usually around the heather. <laughs> now, let's see. You're uh, Connie DeLone, De Leone. Pat DeLeone. Oh, Pat DeLeone, yes, sir, yeah. Rachel. And uh, your name is uh, Constance Watt, huh? Yes, sir. Oh. Groucho, that's my name. Are you Irish, Pat? Well, my first name is Irish. My last name is French, DeLeone. But I'm Italian. <laughs> <laughs> well, that clears that up. Man. Now, if you're Italian, how did you get a name like Pat? Oh, Pasquale is really my name, but Pat is uh, my Irish name. My mother comes from Ireland. Oh. Yes, sir. And your, your name Long is... Long Island. <laughs> well, do you often tell jokes like that one? Uh, oh, I just add lib. And, and, and if and you then. don't, why do you single me out for punishment? <laughs> I just add lib. And... Oh, you're an ad liver, huh? Ad lobbyist, put it. Ad lobbyist. Are, you, oh, a ad lobbyist. are uh, you a professional comedian? No, sir, I'm a waiter. A dumb waiter at the Abruzzi restaurant. <laughs> Sunset La Brea. Well, what kind of a place is Abruzzi's? Uh? Well, it's an Italian restaurant. We serve. Uh, Italian food, we serve anybody or anything. <laughs> you serve anybody, anything? Anything, yes, sir. Well, what is your specialty? Well, we have what they call a salt and bocca, which is a stuffed veal roll with mozzarella cheese, Italian ham, that's the waiter, and mushroom sauce. <laughs> I like the way he slips those in there. <laughs> Well, you're a nice couple, and it's been fun talking to you two. And as you walk down life's lane together, I'm sure you'll be very happy. We had that left over from the show last week. <laughs> All right, now let's play your bet your life. Now, you have chosen, as your category, general information. Is that right? Yes, sir. A great man, wasn't he, general information? He sure was. How was it you didn't say that? General Mills' brother, isn't it? Yes. Now, I'm going to ask you some questions. And General Electric's brother, too. Along well, with your connections. Yes, and if you miss... <laughs> Back to what's what. <laughs> well, now, if you miss two in a row, you're through. If you get four in a row right, you win a thousand dollars. What was the name of the knot that Alexander cut with his sword? I don't mean Alexander's ragtime band. Knot or nut? Knot. No. Nut. Not. Not the name of the knot that Alexander cut. Sorry, you got me there. It's nut. a famous saying that means getting through a difficult uh, situation. Wouldn't be lovers not. Well, that's pretty difficult, but it isn't the uh, the right answer. It's the Gordian knot. And you have one wrong, and don't get the next one wrong, or the game is over for All you. All right. Now, what kind of an animal do you associate with the slave Androcles? Sorry. What kind of an animal? Lion. Lion? Lion is right. Lion is right. Well, you're on the track now. You have one right. You've been lying all evening. Why didn't you say that? <laughs> All right. Now, who was the Dutch leader of New Netherlands? 
who officially uh, bought Manhattan from the Indians for $24. Some town named after him there. No. Well, it's Peter Minuet or Peter Minuet. Peter Minuet. That's Peter Minuet. You may not. It's a beef. You may not believe it, but you happen to be talking to Peter Minuet right here. I play the part of Peter Minuet in Warner Brothers: The Story of Mankind. And if you rush to your nearest theater, you can probably see it right now. Now that you still have one wrong. <laughs> well, that's besides the point. I don't think they're interested in that. So don't get the next one wrong. All right oh. now. What do you call the groups in Washington who are paid to persuade legislators to vote for or against a bill? A group of people that are paid to... What do you call the groups in Washington who are paid to persuade legislators to vote for or against a bill? Well, they're lobbyists. Well, they have two wrong in a row, Groucho, That's so the uh, game is over. All right. They're through? Mm -hmm. Well, here it is. I'm going to... Uh, you get this one right, and you can win $100. Who wrote the autobiography of Benjamin Franklin? Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin is right. Sorry you didn't win, win more, but thanks anyway for being on with us. You bet your life. An awful nation. We'll meet our next couple in just a moment. Today, mothers are happier, are younger. They give just a little more special care to their families and enjoy thinking of special ways to please them. That's why they use the in ingredient for modern cooking, pet evaporated milk, with more than double the cream of ordinary milk. Pet milk is in for that delicious casserole, in for a whole new flavor in smothered chicken. Pet milk is in with delicious desserts that give these little benefits. So rich, so modern, with more than double the cream of ordinary milk. Pet milk is in with today's cooking. Well, Groucho, Mr. Arthur Morales is waiting to talk to you. Miss Parner is a special guest, Mrs. Zetta Wells, who, with her late husband, Carveth Wells, has explored just about the whole world. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and take home an extra $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Zetta Wells and Arthur Morales, huh? Zetta, let's start with you. What kind of a name is Zetta? Oh, I wish you'd tell me. I'd never known. I asked Mother, and she said it came from Holland, a great aunt. Where are you from, Zetta? Well, I was brought up in Norfolk, Virginia. And then where'd you go from there? Well, from there I went to school in Paris. Oh. And your name is, uh, is Arthur Morales? Is That's that right. Morales, is that the way you pronounce it? Morales. Morali? That's right. Where are you from? Arturo? I suppose that's the way you that's say right. it. That's right. I'm from Puebla de Los Angeles, in, oh. Me in all Mexico. In all Mexico? That means the city of the angels. Uh, do you have a job, Arturo? A very sweet one, yes. I'm a pastry chef. I'm a Balaguer's pastry chef in the valley. What, what do you do on your job? Oh, mostly fresh pastries, decorated cakes. Mm. Things like that, fancy things. Mm. Did you go through school in, oh, in yes. Mexico? Oh, I... yes, I did, but I quit to join the revolution. Well, who wouldn't, huh? <laughs> they had a revolution in school? What was the most revolting? Well, uh, kids or the teacher? <laughs> I think both. Oh. What did you do in the revolution? Well, I just joined the Federal Army to fight the rebels off. Were you a general in this uprising, uh, mm, not general? No, Groucho, I joined as a private. But about 30 days later, I was a sergeant major. You must be a natural military leader, huh? How come you were promoted so fast? Did everybody else desert? No, Groucho. Did they go I, over the hill too in Mexico? Some envious people say that it was because my uncle was a commanding officer. <laughs> and that's how you jumped from a private to a sergeant major, major in three days, huh? Mm -hmm. Thirty days. Thirty days, huh? Well, what took you so long? <laughs> no vacancy. Oh. <laughs> What did you do when you got out of the army? Uh, I joined the Navy. <laughs> well, was it pretty exciting in the Navy and during the revolution? No, Groucho was kind of quiet. You know, in fact, most of those Mexican revolutions were pretty quiet. Anybody that got shot, you know, was just a mistake. <laughs> you mean they didn't try to shoot anybody? They shot, but not as for anybody in particular, just make noise. 
Just in the general direction. <laughs> How did the revolt uh, finish? That particular one, well, I was present at the end. In the, when I was in the Navy, there was only one general left up in arms. And uh, they sent us to... They sent the ship I was on, you know, to try to get him because he was up in a river. A country that you can reach through a river. How many boats are here? No, he didn't have any. Yeah. <laughs> what was he doing? Swimming around up there? No, I guess he was just uh, thinking what he was going to do next. Oh. <laughs> the was over anyway. Oh. Well, then what happened? Well, we went out there and... Uh, you met the enemy? Oh, yes. The admiral found out that the general there was his old, an old, old schoolmate of his. They were schoolmates? Yeah, so we didn't have any fight. We had a fiesta. <laughs> What was the general's name? It wasn't Gonzalez Gonzalez, was it? No. <laughs> no. Well, that certainly is a pleasant way to end a revolution. Yes. Unload the guns and get the soldiers loaded instead. <laughs> Zeta, let's get back to you. I'm interested in how you got into the exploring business. What brought you and Carbeth Wells together? He wanted, as a matter of fact, I was the personal manager of six explorers. Who were these explorers? Oh, uh, the late Martin Johnson, Lord Thomas, Sir Hubert Wilkins, Dr. Roy Chapman Andrews. Well, you've been all over the world, Zeta. What's the wildest place you've ever been to? Los Angeles during the rush hour? Oh, no. Death Island. Death Island? Where mm -hmm. is that? That's an island just about uh, halfway between the Philippines and Formosa. And the most unusual thing, Groucho, is the fact that the women rule the roost. In fact, the women say that the men, well, they look upon all men with contempt. They say they're only fit to furnish children and food. And, and you and had to go halfway around the world and discover <laughs> this? <laughs> well, you must lead a pretty exciting life. For example, what do you do for relaxation, just, I mean, oh, for the fun of Groucho, it? Oh, Groucho, the fun I have is with my beloved little talking minor bird, Ruffle. You have a minor bird? Yes. You mean he's under 21? Oh, no, no. But well, what is a minor bird? Well, he's the cleverest talking bird in the world. In fact, the American Museum of Natural History gave a uh, press party for raffles, and they sent out a press notice in which they said that the minor bird has the most human-like voice of any bird in the world. Now, is raffles a male or a, or a female uh, hen bird? Well, <laughs> Actually, uh, I don't know, and no scientist has ever, ever been able to determine the sex of a minor bird. Well, did it ever occur to you that perhaps no scientist is interested in this particular thing? <laughs> but they are. Ornithologists are. They'd give oh. anything to be able to determine the sex of minor birds. Well, if this bird is so smart, why doesn't he tell you what sex he is? <laughs> I'm sure if it was a female, he'd have told you long ago. <laughs> said he'd make a wonderful carrier pigeon because he'd deliver the message and he'd read it as well. That's true. Now, yeah. Zeta, isn't there any way you, you can tell about this bird? Oh, well, yes. Well, I suppose you could, Groucho. If, if you put him in a cage alone and he happened to lay an egg, then you'd know that he was a ladybird. But, that doesn't uh, mean a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I leave He's man. never laid an egg, not even on TV yet. Look, I leave my milkman alone, and he leaves eggs every morning. <laughs> and he's certainly no lady. And according to my cook, he's not even a gentleman. Well, well Raffles, the way he's different, he'll uh, answer questions, you Can know. your bird really talk, or are you a ventriloquist? Well, uh, no, I'm not a ventriloquist, uh, but, and he can really well, where talk. Where is this bird? Well, he's right back here. Well, Would you like to see Drag this vulture out here, and let's see he's what he can do. a vulture, but you wait. He'll talk for you. Just you a moment, will. I'll get him, oh, well, yes? We'll get him out you here. You sure? In the meantime, uh, what do you think of this, Arturo? Huh? By the bird? Did you make a pastry out of this minor bird? Oh, yeah, I could make a crow you, pie. You, <laughs> what's that? I could make a crow pie out a of A crow it. pie, yeah. You know, the same family anyway. Yes. Uh, is that the same family? A minor bird and a crow yeah. bird? Now, here's oh, Raffles. Is. Raffles, when you heard Groucho, did you laugh? When you heard Groucho on TV last week, did you laugh? Did you laugh, Raffles? Well, Raffles, uh, what are you going to say to Groucho? What do you say? What do you say? Can he do anything else? Sure. <laughs> he's just waking up. He's been asleep. What are you going to say? 
going to... You've got nothing on me. What are, you... <laughs> what are you say to Groucho? What are you going to say? What are you... Hell. Well, what are you going to say to Groucho? What do you say? How do you like the pretty girls? <laughs> now ask me. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> now, ask me. <laughs> what are you going to say to Groucho? What do you say? Darling. Oh, very seductive. Hello, darling. What do you say to Groucho? Say it again. What do you say to Groucho? What do you say? What do you say to Groucho? What do you say? What do you say to Groucho? I think he's through for the no, night. No, wait a minute. He is not. I think he wait shot his bolt. Listen, 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 listen to him. When if you... I ever saw a pie, a, dog, a bird that was headed for his pie, this is it. <laughs> Do your best. Raffles. You say you make a living with this thing? <laughs> Raffles. Can you imagine you if he could talk? When you wait just a minute. When you heard Groucho, did you laugh? Okay. Did you laugh? <laughs> 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 I'm willing to eat crow. I'm willing to eat crow. You give it a him and I'll eat crow. Look, he'll talk for you. Ask him what he whistles for the G.I.s. Ask him if he's in the army. Uh, um... Raffles? Waffles. Are you in the army? Uh, Are you in the army? (laughs) 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 He's a little bit sleepy now. Look, Raffles, all this audience. Uh... Tell him, ask him to whistle Hail Hail the Gang's All. Uh, would you mind whistling Hail Hail the Gang's All here? Say Hail Hail. Hail Hail. You see, but you've say got it. the food. No, 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 though. You take give the food. Give me the stuff. All right. Yeah, now say ask Hail him. Hail. Don't give it to him, though. Ask him to whistle it. No, I, I'm going to eat oh. it myself. I'm just going <laughs> to ask him to whistle Hail Hail the This is the first bird that won't give me the bird. Are you convinced? That's wonderful. Yes, That's I wonderful. am. <laughs> <laughs> Would you all mind standing up? He's going to whistle the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> Come on, Star Spangled Banner. No, no. Whistle the Star Spangled Banner. Come on, whistle the Star Spangled Banner. Maybe he could do God Bless whistle America is shorter. <laughs> well, look. Uh, well, Zetter, I've had enough. He's, he's amazing. <laughs> you know, we have a duck on this show, and as far as I know, our duck has never had a romance. Oh, really? Do you think that uh, Raffles might be interested? I think he might. Uh, could we have the duck down? Ducky, come on oh, down. Look at this. Isn't this is the duck. Why, Raffles, look now. You'll whistle the Star Spangled Banner for the duck. Hey, I forgot Whistle about the it. secret word. Uh, Ducky Scram, beat it. I hope you didn't see it. No. <laughs> again, Doc. <laughs> now, don't look at the secret word. Huh? No, I won't. That's now, not fair. Now, Manuel, no, you didn't see it out your Manuel, did you? Whistle this Star Spangled Banner, Raffles. Whistle it, darling. Whistle it. It's a little bit late and you're sleepy, but I know you'll do it. Come on. Whistle this Star Spangled Banner. Whistle Star Spangled Banner. Racho, you ask him. He'll do it for you. Whistle God Bless America. <laughs> okay, whistle this Star Spangled, Star Spangled Banner. Banner. Here we've got a bird with a human brain, and on this stool we have a human with a bird brain. <laughs> We're going to give you the $100 just for being so honest and not looking at the sacred word, which was chair. Oh, uh, how nice. Yes, it is. And, but well, you well, deserve We can use that for grapes, can't we? Yes, you can. Now, you can buy an awful lot of grapes. What are you going to do with your $50? Well, uh, my... And I'd like to go on, but it's time for you to win some money. You're going to play your bet your life, and we want one answer between you on all the questions. You ready? Thank Come on you, over Rachel. Here, right? May I just put Rachel's yes, okay. off here? Take the no, bird take away. Don't get him near Arturo here. <laughs> <laughs> You're liable to have chicken fricassee. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever cook a goose, uh, Arturo? Mm, no. No, you just I'm cook not a pastry, cook. Yeah? Pastry, that's all. Now, you selected world geography. I'm going to ask you some questions. If you miss two in a row, you're out. And if you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. All right, you ready? One answer between you now. Cathay is the old name for what modern country? You said it. They understand you. China. 
China, China boy is right. China boy. One right, three more to go, and you'll have a thousand dollars. Santiago is the capital of what country? Chitty? Hey, not so loud. I can hear. Even I can hear you, and I'm stone dead. <laughs> Halfway to a thousand dollars now. What is the capital of Nicaragua? Managua. Managua is right. Managua. One more right, and you'll have a thousand dollars. What is the capital of Australia? Sydney. Oh. Talk it over. Oh, yes, of course. That was that. Yes, of course. Come on, what's the answer? Canberra. You see, he hasn't been around the world, and he knew more than you did. Huh? <laughs> and you got four in a row, and you win a thousand dollars. Well, there you are. You see how easy it is? All you need to win money on this show is a, is a Mexican pastry cook, that's all. <laughs> but how did you learn so much in the bottom of a, of a bakery? Well, I almost finished college. Oh. I would have eaten the revolution and come. <laughs> well, you want $1,000. Now, you can keep it and quit, or else you can come back later and try to double your money. You may even get a crack at 10000 So go over there and sit down and think about it. And thanks for being on the show. Thank you, Groucho. Thank you. Now, in just one minute, we'll find out whether our last couple will take a chance on winning $10,000. Pet. Cook inspired with Pet. Creamy frozen fruit dessert. Easy with Pet evaporated milk. One package frozen fruit. Two-thirds cup of Pet. Whip at low speed. Now, one-third cup powdered sugar. Increase to high speed. Pet whips thick and smooth. Freeze to ice cream richness. Inspired. Inspired. Cook inspired with the milk with twice the country cream. Pet. And nothing is better for baby's formula. Pet. All the whole milk nourishment he needs. Extra vitamin D. Pure. So digestible. The best milk to help him grow healthy, happy, pet evaporated milk. All right, George, let's find out what our last couple has decided to do about the big question. Mrs. Wells and Mr. Morales, would you come in again, please? Now, you've won $1,000 so far. Now, you have a chance to win a lot more, maybe even 10000 Or you can stop here and keep your 1000 If you decide to try for the big money and fail, you wind up with a total of 500 Now, what do you propose to do? Mr. Morales has a boy graduating from high school next week. So uh, I feel the burden hand for him and for me, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, or if you want to go on, it's, you, may, you, you decide. Let's go. All right, let's go. You too? Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Groucho. Despite your decision, thanks for being on thank the show. Thank you very Congratulations, much. you okay, bet your life. Thank you, <laughs> George Penniman signing off with a reminder from the National Safety Council. September is Child Safety Month. So parents, teach them to cross at corners, obey signals, and look before crossing. $100. The way tonight is food. Scram. <laughs> George, proceed. Well, Groucho, we have a couple of young single people for you tonight, and uh, their names are Miss Barbara Schmidt and Mr. Mario DeRay. So would you come in, please, folks, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome for the South of Plymouth. <laughs> Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Barbara Schmidt and Mario DeRay, me, uh, A. Uh, which one is Barbara? Oh, I am. That's uh, your Barbara. That's about the silliest question I guess I've ever asked on this show. <laughs> How old are you, uh, Barbara? I'm 18. 18, huh? Yeah. A lovely age for a girl. In fact, it's a lovely age for a woman of 40. <laughs> Mr. Ed, you're not married, are you, Barbara? No, I'm not. You're not. Uh, are you engaged? No. Completely free agent? I'm completely <laughs> unattached. 
Is that so? You mean your zipper's broken? <laughs> well, something's holding you together, and I, I wish it was me. <laughs> Where are you from originally? Heaven? Originally, I'm from Albany, New York. Albany, yeah? Uh... Yes. And now I live in Pasadena. Oh. Well, uh, tell me, do you go to school, or do you have a job, or are you self sus Sustaining or self-supporting or what? No, I go to school. I go to UCLA and I'm majoring in English. Oh. Oh, that's pretty good. Can you speak it at all? Uh... <laughs> so why did you come to California to learn English? Don't they uh, speak English in Albany? <laughs> yes, well, I prefer the climate here in California. Oh. You're Mario, is that your name? Mario. Yeah. Mario. You're not Mario Alonzo, are you? No, I'm Mario Dure. Are you related to Mario Alonzo? No, but Al Dore is my brother. He's related to Mario Lanza? No, he's my brother. Your brother is Al Dore? Yes. Well, congratulations. You're very lucky. <laughs> now then, who is Al Dore? <laughs> he's a movie star. He's a movie star? Oh, a movie yeah. star. The only movie star I know is Francis X. Bushman. <laughs> You're a pretty big brute, Mario, aren't you? I'm big, yes. Yeah. I'm surprised you don't play football. Why is it? I do play football. I play for the University of Southern California. I play with the team. You play with USC? That's just what I said. I'm surprised you don't play football. <laughs> <laughs> you hate USC, uh, Bob? I don't hate it. No. But I'm for UCLA. Uh -huh. So am I. <laughs> No, only in the last five minutes. Oh. <laughs> Up to now, I was a fan of Rutgers. <laughs> now, Barbara, I imagine life must be interesting for a pretty girl in college. I've never been a pretty girl in college, but uh, I'm only guessing. Now, I wasn't even a pretty girl in high school. <laughs> Does anything exciting ever happen to you, Barbara? The most exciting thing that ever happened to me was I was chosen the 1954 Rose Queen, Pasadena. Oh, you were Queen of the Roses, yes. eh? Oh, that's a very high honor. Congratulations. Thank well, you. Mm -hmm. Pretty tough competition. Yes, there was quite a bit. Well, enough. Let's get down to brass tacks. We've had enough of this historical stuff. Uh, Mario, will you marry this girl? <laughs> no, I can't. You can? Steady. I'm going steady right now. Well, call her up and tell her you're going to marry Barbara. She'll understand. Women are very understanding that way. Well, say, your girl must be quite a dish, Mario, if you'll turn down the Rose Queen for her. How did you meet your inner Marata? <laughs> well, I met her about two years ago at a dance, and I liked her, so a couple of weeks later I asked her out, and that's it. We've been going out ever since. If you were so crazy about it, why did you wait two weeks? Were you saving up a dime for the phone? <laughs> I was busy doing other things. <laughs> other things? <laughs> My boy, take it from an old hand in these matters. There are no other things. <laughs> Where is this Dazzler? Is she, is she out front here tonight? Is she no, she, no, she's in Pinole, California. That's about 400 miles north of L.A. And she she's 400 miles from here? Yeah. She's the secretary for the district attorney up there. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> you mean your girl is 400 miles away and you turn down a date with probably the most beautiful girl in America who is standing right next to you? I have to, I guess. <laughs> no choice. You know, that's like living in Las Vegas and going all the way to Cedar Rapids just to play bingo in a church bazaar. <laughs> Well, you're, you're an attractive couple, and Mario, if you're smart, you'll marry this girl as soon as she can support you. <laughs> I forgot to ask you one question. Do you have a fellow? No. Or did I ask you? No, Why you not? Well, I have many fellows. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I see. All right, let's play your bet you. <laughs> I had a fellow wanted to meet you. It was me. <laughs> you both know the rules of this swindle? Uh, this game? <laughs> You selected the musical category. These are all top tunes of the last 20 years. And Fenneman, just keep looking right here. Huh? Okay, now what do you want to start with? 10, 20, all the way to 100. 50, 
70? 70. 70. Okay, this song is from the score of the musical Knickerbocker Holiday. Now you give me the title. <laughs> September song. September song is absolutely all right. <laughs> and you're off to a good start. You have one hundred seventy dollars. Now, what are you going to take a fling at? Sammy Sammy Flavor, eighty. Eighty. We'll go eighty. Eighty. Eighty dollars. Sammy Kahn and Julie Stein wrote this song about ten years ago. What's the name of it? Play it. <laughs> Let it snow, let it snow. That's right. Let it snow is right. <laughs> now I have two hundred and fifty dollars. What are you going to go for now? Ninety. We'll go for ninety. Ninety. This song was a big hit a few years ago. Let's see if you can identify it. Wish you were here. Wish you were here is right. $340. Last chance to beat the other couples. What are you going to go for? We'll go $100. $100. This song was written by Rogers and Hammerstein. What is the title of it? Play it, Jack. Hello, Young Lovers. Hello, Young Lovers. That's right. Now give them a big kiss. <laughs> and you're lined up with $440. There goes that girl and the district attorney and everything else. <laughs> well, thanks and good luck from the Soda Plymouth oh, dealers. <laughs> Groucho sent me to see the new DeSoto. Groucho sent us and we want to drive this car. Oh, what a thrill you're going to feel when you're behind the wheel. DeSoto is the smartest car, smartest of the smart cars. It's so stylish and now it's Groucho says. Let's drive the new DeSoto at DeSoto Plymouth dealers today. From every angle, from here, from here or from here, DeSoto is smart. DeSoto is the car that makes people stop and look. The car you'll be proud to have standing in front of your house. It's smart to own the smartest of the smart cars. Here is DeSoto's smart double cockpit instrument panel with a new flight control lever, convenient, but out of your way because it's used so seldom. And outside, accenting the forward look is the dramatic slash of color we call a color sweep. It's beautiful styling like this that makes the new DeSoto the smartest of the smart cars. Drive a DeSoto before you decide. Go drive the new DeSoto at DeSoto Plymouth Dealers today. Uh, Groucho, we have a man with an unusual occupation for you. He's Mr. Vern Lucius Cameron. His partner is a housewife. She's Mrs. Mariana Ehrlich. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your bet your life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Mrs. Mariana Ehrlich and Mr. Vane Lucius Cameron. A couple of pretty fancy monikers there. <laughs> Mariana, where are you from? I am originally from Czechoslovakia, and I came over France and Portugal to the United States. You came with a friend from Portugal to the United States? I came with my best friend, my husband. Your best friend is uh -huh. your husband? Uh-huh. Well, that may be true in Czechoslovakia, but... <laughs> Whereabouts behind the Iron Curtain did you come from? Prague, Czechoslovakia. Prague, huh? Mm -hmm. You were poor but Prague at the time, huh? <laughs> Could you give us some idea of your age, Mariana? I'd rather skip that question. You'd rather skip it? Well, skip around here and then give us your age. I heard once Luella Farson said that a girl who tells her age is liable to tell anything. Well, I expect to weigh many other things out of you before we throw it. You're uh, Jules Vine, Lucius Cameron. I huh? was named after Jules Vine. Is that right? And you're, you're he was named first, and I was named after. Yeah, that's a good thing. <laughs> where are you from, Vine? I was born in Sioux City, Iowa. And oh, that's where all the lawyers come from, isn't it? Is it? I didn't know that. Well, the Sioux City, I imagine that's where. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, I spent 
three years in Iowa, three years in Kansas, and then spent most of my boyhood in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. What sort of work do you do? Groucho, I'm a hydrologist. You mean you eat only vegetables? <laughs> What's a, well, what is a hydrologist is a man who locates, or a woman who locates uh, underground liquids, oil or water. You mean like a bootlegger? <laughs> yes, if they're underground. Well, how do, you, how do you go about finding water? Well, I have instruments that I developed over a period of 32 years of locating, locating wells. Well, what makes this thing work? It uh, takes on a charge from the electrical aura around the body, and uh, this positive charge causes it to become attracted to the negative charge coming up by reflection from underground water. Mm -hmm. Well, you lost me quite some time ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you ever found any wells for people? Yes, sir, I've located thousands of them. I don't know how many thousands. Well, how, how much do you charge for finding water? A cent a gallon? Or? Well, the price ranges from $25 to $100, uh, $100 per for well, or $100 a day flat rate. $100 a day? Yes, sir. Well, you must be finding water because you're certainly soaking somebody. That's you? right. <laughs> I'd like to go on talking to you two, but the time has come to play your bet your life. In the race for the $2,000, the first couple won $440, and the secret word is food. I'm sure you're familiar with this game. I don't have to explain yes, it to you. What's it mean? This is a spelling quiz. This is an old-fashioned spelling bee. You get only one chance at the correct spelling and only one answer between you. I want you to spell the word and then pronounce it. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Spell it and then pronounce it. All right, what do you start with? 10, 20, 50, all the way to 100. 70. 70 suits me. 70 suits me, too. All right, spell the word lieutenant, meaning an officer in military service. L-I-E-U-T-E-N-A-N-T. Right. This kid's from Czechoslovakia, yeah. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> now I have $170. Mm -hmm. Well, what are you going to go for? Well, I'll go for 80. 80 with you, okay? Right. Sure. Spell the word aluminum, meaning a light silver white metal. Metal. A-L-U-M-I-N-A-N-O-M-I-C. Aluminum. L A L U U M I. N U N. That's right. Right. You now have two hundred fifty dollars. You went to night school, huh? I did. Yeah. I went to night school. And day school, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to spell better than to pronounce. Ninety. Well, spell the word fictitious, meaning not real, counterfeit, not genuine. F I C. T. T. I. T. T. O. U. S. I O U S. F-I-C-T-I-T-I-O-U-S. F-I-C-T-I-T-I-O-U-S. All right, now. I-O-U-S. Decide one answer between you now. <coughs> what are you going to say? It's I-O-U-S, I'm sure. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. All right, then you spell it. F-I-C-T-I-T-I-O-U-S. Fictitious. That's right. That's right. <laughs> You now have three hundred forty dollars. Some illiterate in the front row was hollering you were wrong. <laughs> I trust There's you. your last chance to beat the other couples. What are you going to go for? Hundred. Hundred. Is that all right with you? you? That's right. All right. Spell the word penitentiary, meaning a state or federal prison. P P E N I T I T I E N. No. Penitentiary. P E N I. No, P E. Yes, that's right. P E M I T E M. All right, come on up. P I A R Y. That's right. Now spell it. One of you spell it. P E N I T E N T I A R Y. That is right. And you went all the way. You wind up with $440. Well, thanks and good luck to the Soda Plymouth Dealers. Thank you so much. We invited some girls who worked for an aircraft plant to our factory tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected June French to be on the show. And her partner is Mr. Albert Hall. So folks, would you come in please and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Mr. Albert Hall and uh, June French. June, uh, how old are you? I'm 21. 21, huh? Mm -hmm. eh? What's your hometown? Mineola, Texas. Mineola, Texas? Is there a town named Mineola? Yes, sir. Where is that near? Oh, it's about 80 miles east of Dallas. 
You mean, well, how far is that from Neiman Marcus? That is Neiman Marcus. Oh. Are you married? Yes. You are? Yes. Well, you're pretty young to be married, aren't you? I've been married six years. You were married when you were 15? Yes. Boy, they catch them early down there, don't they? Huh? No, I caught him early. Oh. Well, at least you're honest enough to admit it. Most women are not. <laughs> Mr. Hall, uh, where are you from? Originally from Kansas, born in Kansas. <laughs> Farm. Well, you don't have to get angry about it. This guy's trying to hypnotize me. Huh? Did you grow up on a farm back there in Kansas, sir? Uh... No, I left when I was 10 years old. Uh-huh. Your name is Albert Hall? Yes. Well, that's in London. Isn't that where the musicians uh, play in the concerts? Oh, yes. Are you, uh, did you know that? Were you oh, named after that place? Evidently. I... I didn't select the name. Oh. <laughs> a soft job up here. Huh? <laughs> the last time I come down here without my blackjack. <laughs> Where did you go when you left the farm? Lincoln, Nebraska. <laughs> what were you doing there? Well, I went to school there. When I quit school, I got a job on the Nebraska State Journal as a printer's devil. <laughs> Will you ask him the next question? <laughs> you were a printer's devil. Well, why did you get fired? Uh, maybe you weren't the type, huh? I didn't get fired. Oh. Al, are you married? Oh, yes. You are, huh? How long have you been married, Al? Forty-two years. Is your wife out here with you? Yes, she's in the audience. Uh-huh. Oh. Well, what sort of work have you been doing lately? Uh, well, homicide? I came to Seattle and I got a job on the Seattle you Times. imagine if he doesn't win any money here, what's going to happen to me? <laughs> I'm leaving long before that. <laughs> You say you went to Seattle and you got a job on the paper? Seattle Times in the composing room. I see. <laughs> and how long were you there? Fifteen <laughs> years. Maybe I can out-frighten them. <laughs> Boy, would he fit in all of Dickens' stories, huh? <laughs> Well, June, what kind of work do you do? I'm a messenger. I feel safe on asking you. <laughs> You're a messenger? Well, what do you do as a messenger? Do you deliver messages? No, I deliver blueprints and supplies and food or anything else to, to put the engineers want. Oh, well enough. <laughs> you said food, so you and Gargantua each get $50. All right, beat it, Doc. Now, who do you deliver these things to? To the engineers. Uh-huh. Well, how are you dressed? Uh, do you wear this kind of an outfit? Or? Oh, yes. Skirts, blouses, sweaters. Uh -huh. You know, better be careful. You know, I know something about engineers. They all have plans of their own, you know. <laughs> do these engineers... Mr. Hall, I am reluctant to do this, but let's get back to you. Uh...
What are you doing in Hollywood and who are you frightening? <laughs> what are you doing here at present, Mr. Hall? Well, things got tough up in the mountains. No money. I came to Hollywood to find out how they make money. <laughs> Well, how do they make money? Uh, I walk up and down Hollywood Boulevard. And I come to the conclusion that 50% of them there on relief. And then I think the other 40% uh, going around to these banks and loan companies. There's three or four in every box. I think you've got something there. Now, have you decided on the type of work that you'd like to do in Hollywood? What would you like to do, Al, as long as you're out here now? You're not doing anything. Well, what you're doing there looks kind of soft. Well, it is, but I don't want it to get around, that's all. Just, uh, I guess the jig is up. <laughs> well, Al, the thing is up for loose chatter. Now, let's play You Bet Your Life. In the race for the $2,000, the first two couples are tied with $440. Uh, you both understand the rules of the game. Now, you select the geography. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. But if you see. All right. How much? She says 100. 100. Okay. What country is separated by 1,000 miles of the Republic of India? Pakistan. Pakistan is right. Oh. <laughs> well, you're off to a good start. You now have $200. Now, just so that we don't have any confusion on the next questions, consult before you answer, because he might have said something else. And you wouldn't have won the money. All right, what are you going to go for now? <laughs> $90. <laughs> Now, one answer. What great river is sacred to the Hindus? It empties into the Bay of Bengal. Ganges. Ganges is right. <laughs> All right, you now have $290. Uh, hey, you're pretty lucky to have a gal like that, oh, would you? I always been lucky all my life, Groucho. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Al. Now, what are you going to go for? 80. Yeah, yeah. That's 80. The city of Buffalo, New York, is located on which of the Great Lakes? Erie. Lake Erie is right. What happened to that talk I gave you? You now have $370. Now, I, what are you going to go for? Yeah. This is your last chance to beat the other couple. Sure. $70. $70. What is the largest city in Finland? It is also the capital. Now, one answer. Talk it over first. Helsinki? I don't know. Helsinki? That's right. Helsinki. Is right. <laughs> and you'll wind up with $440. <laughs> and that means that all three I of our get couples everybody tonight... married in the show, if they're married or not. It doesn't make any difference. <laughs> that means that all three of our couples tonight, in just one minute, will get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question. Everybody tie. <laughs> I have a question for you, and it's a very important one. Is your car safe to drive? Can you see safely? Can you steer safely? Can you stop safely? Well, if you're not absolutely sure, take your car to your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. You make certain your car is a safe car. You'll make an expert check of your brakes, tires, headlights, taillights, steering, and all other important safety features. He'll make sure your car is safe and dependable and tell you if you need any adjustments or repairs. And if you do, he'll make them quickly and at a reasonable cost. His technicians are specially trained and they use the very latest equipment and factory approved methods. They'll make your car a safe car. From headlights that enable you to see clearly at night to taillights that enable other drivers to see you. Everything that's important to your safety will be put in tip-top condition. And it won't take long. In a short time, your DeSoto Plymouth dealer will make your car a safe car. And at a reasonable cost. No matter what make of car you drive, visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. Make sure your car is a safe car. 
Congratulations, here are the three couples all tied for the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question. We've given them little slips of paper. They'll write down one answer between them, and uh, if they all get it right, we'll uh, split the money among all of them. For $2,000, what was the name of the famous English jurist whose commentaries are fundamental in any study of English law? <laughs> What are the answers? Mr. DeRay? Barbara Schmidt and Mario Doray's answer is nothing. June French and Al Hall's answer is nothing. Mariana Ehrlich and Vine Cameron's answer is also nothing. This one has got Hoyle, but that's wrong. It's Sir William Blackstone, a very famous man <coughs> in the history of jurisprudence. I'm sorry you all lost. That means the big question next week will be worth $2,500. Well, they lost the big money, but they all did pretty well in, the, well in the quiz, didn't they, George? Yes, all the way. How much did they each win? Each couple won $440. Well, congratulations to all of you and to all of you. This is George Fenneman signing off with a message from the National Safety Council. The month of May has been designated as National Car Safety Check Month. To check accidents, take your car in for a safety check without delay. your life. Brought to you by Prom Home Permanent. New creamy prom. The only home permanent that beauty treats your hair as it waves. And white rain. White rain, the safer, milder shampoo because it contains no sulfated detergent. And now, the one, the only... <laughs> Well, here I am again with a chance for each of our couples to win $2,000. And it's even possible somebody might walk out of here with $10,000. Ducky, come down here. This is the secret word. And if anybody says it during the next half hour, Ducky will immediately pay him $100. Okay, Duck, on the lamp. What is the female of Duck, do you know? No, uh, the male is Drake. I guess Duck, I don't know. Drake is a hotel, isn't it? <laughs> What is the female of Duck? Isn't there a farmer Duck? in the audience? Duck? I think it'd be something more than that, wouldn't it? You would, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, I'm not going to lie anything here tonight. That's pretty accurate. <laughs> All right, George, who's first for prom? Well, Groucho, before I introduce the first couple, I'd like to say that the uh, charming lady from uh, Tusa, Italy, uh, Bettina Consolo, is here again tonight, and she'll be out here later in the show to see what kind of a plot you've cooked up for her. Good work, George, and since she's a good cook, I trust she has something cooked up for me, too. I wouldn't be a bit surprised that she has. Uh, right now, though, I'd like you to meet our first contestants. They're uh, Carol Yost and Emmanuel Klein. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your bets alive. Say the secret word, and you each get an extra $50. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Uh, Carol Yost and Emmanuel Klein, eh? Well, they always say age before beauty, so who will I talk to first? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Carol, how old are you? 29. <clears throat> 29. And Mr. Klein, what is your age? 77. Oh, well, you're a fine-looking lad for 77. <laughs> Should I call you Emmanuel, or do you have a nickname? Uncle Manny, I'm called by most everyone. Uncle Manny? Yeah, yes. Oh. Uncle Nanny or Uncle Manny? Nanny. Oh, oh. I thought yeah. perhaps you were a goat. Oh. <laughs> so you're trying to get my goat here, huh? Okay, we're trying to get I don't know what I would do with your goat if I had it, man. Well, you might be kidding me. Oh. I will say, you're pretty sharp there, aren't you? Huh? Where are you from, uh, Manny? I was born in Cincinnati, Ohio, February the 15th, 1880. 1880, huh? Now, Carol, where are you from? I'm from Getty, South Dakota. And then we moved to Pekin, Illinois, and finally settled in Los Angeles. Oh, Pekin, that's where Luella Parsons comes from. Did you know Oh, that? really? No. Yes, you did. You're married, I assume, huh? Yes, I am. How did you meet your husband, then? Well, he was uh, in with the young group that my aunt was in. They were all sort of dating together, and she took me down to the little cafe where they always met, 
introduced me to him and he swung around on the stool and smiled at me and I just went overboard about him. You went overboard? Was this on a boat? <laughs> no. Well, you sound like you were really sold on this fellow, huh? Oh, I was. Are you just as mad about him today as you were then? Well, it's pretty hard to be mad about anybody after 11 years, especially after you hear him snoring. <laughs> Would you like to cure him of snoring? I certainly would. Well, have you tried holding his head underwater for about 12 hours? <laughs> you know, we had a woman on the show one time who had a cure for snoring, and, and it really worked. Oh, what was Would that? Would you be interested I'd, in hearing? I'd love to hear it. She said when her husband went to bed at night, she strapped an orange in the middle of his back, and every time he rolled over and started to snore, he felt this orange, and he was uncomfortable, and he'd roll back on his stomach again. <laughs> and I, a friend of mine tried that on her husband, and at the end of a year... Her husband was still snoring, but she had 112 gallons of orange juice. <laughs> you believe this, Manny? I believe it. Uh, Tell us another. Huh? Tell us another. <laughs> Are you implying that I'm, I'm lying, Manny? No, no, no. Just, just stretching the truth, that's all. <laughs> You know, we have a quiz later where it's conceivable that you might win some money. I want you to remember that, because uh, I'm just as crooked as you are. You know? <laughs> are, are you retired? No, sir, I'm in business for myself. I've oh. been in business for myself all my life, except in five years. Mm -hmm. I'm in the antique business. You're in the antique business? Yes, sir. Now, do you have any other interests aside from antiques? Yes, I happen to be a, a jingle advertising man. Oh. I took that up seven years ago with a fifth grade education, and I'm not afraid to say I'll challenge anyone in the country, regardless of their education, to beat me for speed and originality. You write jingles for I do. advertising, and in spite of that, you've lived 77 years? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, what kind of customers do you have for your advertising? Well, I, mostly professional people. I uh, write uh, a little advertising jingle. As a matter of fact, if you'd like, I'd be glad to write you one right now. Well, I'm not, I'm not that um, eager, but uh, um, could you give us an example of a jingle that increased somebody's business? Yes, sir. Well, the first one I wrote was for a plumber. I do not write any fiction. Everything I'm repeating is, I don't have to remember because it's the truth. Is this the, the poem? First, this, yeah, this, yes, sir. Oh, well, that doesn't the, rhyme what you just no, said. No, no, just, just, just a minute now, just a minute, boy. After all, I'm older than you are. You've got to respect me for my age. Now, just a minute. <laughs> The first one is red like this here. If your plumbing it is, is bad... It is not, and we get anybody on the show that can say that. <laughs> if your plumbing is bad and you looked all over town, take up your receiver and phone L.Z. Brown. <laughs> now, if you like the one again... You know, that, that jingle sort of fits a plumber. Oh, sure. it, it, it even gives me a wrench, that thing. <laughs> Sure, sure, that well, Carol, what do you think of uh, Edgar <coughs> Allan uh, Klein here, the Jingle King? Well, it's all right, but I, I think maybe I'm just a little bit overly critical. I'm, I write verse myself. <laughs> You're a poet too? Manny, run for your life. <laughs> well, this is surely more than just a coincidence. It's a calamity. Is that why Fenneman teamed you two together? Because you're both poets? I guess so. Well, Carol, do you ever get paid for your poems, or is yours free verse? <coughs> no, I write for the Los Angeles Mirror News. They're in three times a week. Oh, well, that's very impressive. Uh, and now they're uh, being uh, syndicated by the Mirror Enterprises Syndicate around the world. Do you phone them in the morning and say the voice is yet to come? <laughs> well, it's like Shakespeare said, Carol. If you've time on your hands and your poetry's fine, Pick up the receiver and phone Mr. Klein. <laughs> Carol, let's find out some more about your poetry. What do you write about? Well, I write about the children and uh, you my have husband. You have children? Yes, and my husband and myself. Uh, there... Could you give us one about your husband? Well, most of my favorites are a little insulting to my husband, so uh -huh. I'll pick out another one. All right, pick one um, out that isn't too drastic. I, I like Knighthood and Flower. Oh, so do I, but give us a poem anyhow. Huh? <laughs> uh, he's lost a lot of gallantries he used in courting days, like opening a door for me or helping in small ways. Now, when I go out to the car, I find he's gone before and settled down behind the wheel while I close my own door. When we were wed, he said, no more would I do things alone. I never knew he meant to build me muscles of my own. <laughs> well, 
Well, that was very good, Carol. You say he always gets in the car ahead of you? Well, you know, after well, 11 years. Yes. <laughs> well, no, no. That Save isn't, time. That isn't a lack of gallantry, Carol. <laughs> no, but you he have does to it hurt. for a very good reason. He's probably seen you drive, and he wants to get to the wheel first. <laughs> Now I'd like to continue this, but we've got to get down to the serious business, which is winning money. Just as soon as George Fenneman takes 30 seconds for gentle white rain. What's good for washing dishes and clothes is not necessarily good for washing your hair. The fact is, most leading shampoos contain some sort of sulfated detergent. But gentle white rain shampoo contains no sulfated detergent at all. Its active cleansing agent is three times milder. White rain gives hair gentle care. Leaves it soft, easy to manage, sunshine bright. White Rain, the gentle lotion shampoo containing no sulfated detergent. We're going to play You Bet Your Life. You selected the dictionary quiz. Are you very good at this, Manny? Well, fairly good. I'll ask you some questions. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. Could you give us a, a short poem, George? <laughs> no, I don't think I could. What about, the dog stood on the railroad track. He didn't hear the whistle. Sausages. Wonderful. <laughs> we used to use that in our school like about 35 years ago. <laughs> what is the cartographer, I guess? Uh, uh, C-A-R-T-O-G-R-A-P-H. Map, map maker. Oh. Omar the map maker. You don't have to go any further. You have one right, three more right, and you'll have $1,000. What is a lapidary? One that cuts stones. Did you discuss this with her? It's right. Oh, but you see how dangerous this is? She might have said something else. She might have said a lapidary is where a secretary sits. <laughs> While she's milking a cow, it's a lapidary. You have uh, two right now. You're halfway to $1,000. All right. Now, talk it over now. What is an anchorite? A-N-C-H-O-R-I-T-E. A N C H O R I T E. And T H A N C H O R I T E. I'm afraid we don't know. Well, it's a hymet or a recluse. Oh, well, you have one wrong now. Don't get the next one wrong or you're out of the game. All right, what does salubrious mean? S A L U B R I O U S. Happy, happy, and healthy. That's close enough. Healthy or wholesome is right. Well, you're back on the right track. You have one right now. What's the word for a trench usually filled with water that you find around an old castle? Moat. Moat is right. Manny, Moat, and Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Two more right, you'll have $1,000. What is a samovar? It's a Russian teapot. A Russian teapot is right. One more right, and you'll have your $1,000. All right, what is the word for the sash or band that men wear instead of a vest? A cummerbund. Cummerbund is right. And you got four in a row and you have $1,000. Well, we can't do it. Thank you, Mr. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Okay. You won $1,000. You can keep it and quit or you can come back later at the end of the show and try to double your money. You may even get a crack at $10,000. So go over there and think about it. And no matter what you decide to do, thanks for being on the show. Thank you, Groucho. <laughs> Okay, all right. He says that if I ever need any jingles, sure. he'd be glad to write them for him free. He's got free. thousands of them. Yes, right. Could you give us one offhand before you leave? <laughs> give us one about yeah. me, <laughs> about Fenneman, huh? George. Let's see just a minute. George. George is rather right. No, it isn't, no. If you sit down at a table for a royal gorge, if you look at the heaviest eater, it'll turn out to be George. <laughs> Not to fool around with a master. That's right, that's right. Goodbye, good luck. Goodbye yeah. and goodbye, goodbye, George. Goodbye. I've had enough of you, too. <laughs> You're welcome. Hey, man, he's not easy to get rid of, this guy. So, as we promised, our friend from last week, Bettina Consolo, is back here to see you again. Fine, send her in. There Hello, it is. Hello, Groucho, how are you? Yeah. That's my yeah. son. That's my son. Looks like two bath mats. Yeah. <laughs> are you sure this is a pizza? That's a pizza. Oh, well, it looks wonderful. This has got no. a salsiccia italiana. It's got a what? Salsiccia italiana. 
Oh, and what is this guy? And this is mozzarella e anchovy, little galecchi, and then a little onion, oh, well, you, you... and cheese. Cheese, huh? And a dog. And a dog? And a dog. <laughs> There's a dog inside of one of these. <laughs> No, no, it's a dog. Flower a dog. Oh, I thought you said a dog. I thought dog. you meant a chow. <laughs> but we're going to have chow later. Now, why do you fool me? I thought they were hubcaps. Well, before you move, we've got to warm it up in the oven. Well, thanks. It's, it's just what I've always wanted, Bettina. Nice, a glass of wine or glass of beer. Yeah. They go for just the nice. You supply the wine, too, Bettina? Yeah, I think it's also the best. To make you a nice rosy chick. <laughs> I hate to uh, have you do these kind of men menial jobs, but would, would you put these in my dressing rooms? I'd be very happy to. Uh, and uh, alight my position, will you? <laughs> I'm standing by. <laughs> well, Bettina, you know why we brought you back here. Have you found a husband yet? You know, no. last week you were said you were looking for a man who had never been in jail. Nobody have, yet. You haven't found anybody? No. Yet? Well, I have a surprise for you. We have located a man for you. Wonderful. <laughs> well, don't get carried away now. No, no, no. I don't all know right. how anxious he is to get married. That's all right. We'll find out. <laughs> I don't know anything about him. All I know is he's not married. That's it. George, will you send out the pigeon? I mean the bridegroom? <laughs> Here he is. Here is your dream man. Welcome to your bachelor life. If you say the extra secret words, you get an extra $50. And a pizza pie. It's a common word, something you find around an Italian restaurant. <laughs> well, what is your name, sir? Oreste Seragnoli. Oreste Signorari? Seragnoli. Signorari, huh? Sera. Gnoli. Sela Nori. Gnoli. Well, I'm Groucho Marx, and this little kid here is Bettina Consola. I'm very glad to meet you. Just call her Baby Doll. <laughs> baby Doll. Now, Bettina, I think we should find out a few facts about him. Don't you think so? He may have a record a mile long. That's all right. Mm -hmm. Now then, uh, where are you from, Mr. Sergnoli? Norway? Bologna. And uh, you came from Bologna, uh, it's... No, Bologna. Bologna. Bologna, huh? Yeah. And you're not married? No, never married in my life. <laughs> this doesn't seem like a very likely subject, does it? <laughs> How old are you? Uh, uh, well, uh, and if you feel like lying a little, don't hesitate. Huh? No, no, I don't hesitate. No. How old I are you? I am 73. How old a man did you say you were looking for, Bettina? Well, around 65. 65? Mm-hmm. It's too late for me, then. <laughs> Bettina, we've got to prove to Oresti that you'd make a better wife than a lot of other women who are looking for husbands. In other, in your opinion, what do other wives do wrong? Oh, a lot of things. Well, what, for example? A lot of things. So they don't know about to spend the money. What that, else do they do wrong besides wasting do, their husband's money? A lot of things. Mm -hmm. Bum housekeepers? Yes, a bum housekeeper, and then stay on the phone all the day long, and they don't get about the house. Huh? They stay on the phone all day? Stay on the phone, and talk to all the friends, what are they doing, what are, what are we going, what are we going to do tomorrow, what are we going to do tonight, <laughs> and uh, all the things, and talk and talk, and... The husband coming to home in the night that they find all the mess all over the place. <laughs> Bettina, you've certainly been in a lot of American homes. Yes. Now, suppose you were married to a Resty. Now, this is just a, a hypothetical okay. case, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, this isn't a fact. This is, we're just building this now. Fine. Now, suppose he came home late some night. Would you ask him where he'd been? Oh, yes. That's the first thing I'm going to ask her. I want to know where they've been and why they're coming home late. If they were all the day along the home, cooking the clean the house, if everything was ready for my husband, when they're coming home in the night, so what would you, you say? Where have you been all the day? I want to... I just thought it's some friend of mine. You know. Everyone, see? Oh. 
<laughs> How is it you never got married or Rusty? Well, I tell you the truth. That is I necessary, like to be well, free. What's that? See, I like to be free. Free? All my life. See, I come in this country for few months. See, it's 34 years I am here. Why? I find out this is the most beautiful country in the world. Well, to be married. No, that's no reason to remain single. <laughs> Why didn't you ever get married? I told you before. No, you just said you. I say why I like to be free, to go everywhere where I like, without ask my wife and to anybody. But Tina, would he have to ask you if he wanted to go out in the evening to the racetrack or something? Well, and she says you want to be free. Where is that free? Well, uh, Arresti, don't you want to have any children? Don't you like... Don't you like children? I like it very much. You like children? Absolutely. I adore children. Plenty. But not mine. <laughs> Bettina, could you come back next week? Sure, any time. We'll have another fellow. Now, Arresti's a nice fellow, but obviously he's not interested in you. He doesn't want... He is a woman hater. He's a misanthrope. No, I don't mean. Oh, no, you're a yeah. misanthrope if I ever saw one. I told Isn't he a misanthrope, Bettina? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> well, let's see how smart Oresti is. He's going to play you bet your life. Now, Bettina, how much did how much did you win last week? We won a broke. You didn't win anything? No. You went for broke? broke? Yeah. Well, maybe Oresti can win something for you and you help him whenever you can, huh? All right? Okay. I hope so. Okay, okay, let's go let's now. Go. You picked the uh, royal capitals. Are you good at this, Oresti? Yeah. I'm going to ask you some questions. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win a thousand dollars. Ready? All right. What is the capital of Cuba? Cuba? Big city. Uh, Cuba? Let's see. I know. I have got that. Cuba. Oh, okay. Havana. That's right, Havana. Have one right, three more right, and you'll have a thousand dollars. All right. What is the capital of Denmark? Denmark, uh, Copenhagen. Copenhagen is right. Two more right, and it's yours. What is the capital of New Zealand? I can ask uh, you my can ask your wife. Uh, wife. Uh, wife. Uh, don't know. Don't know. Don't know. Huh? <laughs> Well, it's, it's Wellington. Uh, it's named after the Duke of Wellington. I believe. You have another chance. You have one wrong now. Don't get the next one wrong or you're out of the game. What is the capital of Egypt? Egypt? Uh, uh, talk it over. Egypt is... Uh, mm. I know. It's... Uh, Alexandria? No, I'm sorry. It's Cairo. Cairo. Well, you... They lost, huh? They're out of the game, yes. I'm sorry you missed two in a row. You're all, uh, we don't want you to go away broke, so I'm going to ask you one question for $100, okay? All right, what city is famous for Boston baked beans? Uh, uh, Italy. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for being with us. You bet your life. And Bettina, you'll be sure to come back here next week. And now, in just a moment, we'll find out if our first couple will try for a chance at the big money. You're peering at a better home permanent through an all-new ventilated spin curler. And because you can see right through all-new ventilated spin curlers, you'll get a lovelier, longer-lasting home permanent. Here's why. All new ventilated spin curlers have wide open spaces like this. They let your waving lotion work more thoroughly outside in, inside out. Your home permanent takes better than ever before. All new ventilated spin curlers come in two styles. Soft style for loose waves that last and regular style for livelier curls. So get rid of your old-fashioned curlers. 
Get all new ventilated spin curlers. All right, George, bring out our first couple and we'll find out what they're going to do. All right, Carol Jost and Emmanuel Klein, you come back, please. You won $1,000 so far. Now you have a chance to win a lot more. Maybe even 10000 or you can stop right here and keep your 1000 If you decide to try for the big money and fail, you wind up with a total of $500. Now, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to come back, not because I'm smart, but because I won't sleep if I don't. <laughs> now, what about you, uh, Uncle Manny? Well, I'll tell you, I've made a vow, and I have no right to abuse that. I want to stay with my vow. You don't want to jeopardize your That's money, is that it? Well, would you like to take a seat over there and see what happens? Yeah, uh, to you. <laughs> I can tell you what's right going to happen. <laughs> Manny, you know you get $500, so you can sit quietly and rest with your conscience. Are you ready? Okay. Now, one answer between you. <laughs> you know what this means now. You have a chance to win a lot more. If you fail, you wind up with a total of $250. Mm -hmm. And that. I can't go home either. <laughs> no. There are many okay. places you can go, Carol. Huh? Okay. So think of a number now between oh, oh, one and ten. Uh, um, take a number. Two. Two and give it a swing. pressure now. Oh. <laughs> Your number was two and it landed on two. Oh. So this question is worth $5,000. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Your number was two. Okay, now are you ready? Yeah. Now one answer between you. Yeah. I'm sure everyone's read the stories of King Arthur and his round oh, table. Oh, oh no. <laughs> For $5,000, I want to know the legendary town where King Arthur held his court. <gasps> oh. Think about it. What do you say? It wasn't Camelot. It certainly was oh Camelot. My God. There goes the husband, the poetry, the three children, and everything. Huh? <laughs> well, what are you going to do with that money? Well, gosh, with, with three boys, our house is sort of busting at the seam. I, I think I'd like to make it a little bit bigger. Well, that's, that's wonderful. Congratulations for being with us. You bet your life. Thank you, Groucho. Good question. Next week, You Bet Your Life will be brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. Now, here's Peggy Taylor. And here's good news for you. Now you can buy this big and beautiful DeSoto four-door sedan for only $2,732.25. That's the factory retail price. Of course, state and local taxes, transportation and delivery charges are extra. Prices may vary according to individual dealer policy. Now, move up to the luxurious new DeSoto. It's only twenty-seven thirty-two twenty-five. Tonight, You Bet Your Life has been brought to you by new creamy prom. That's the word prom, with the beauty secret cream. And the secret of hair beauty is new creamy prom. <laughs> brings you the Gary Moore program on another network. Consult your local paper for time and station. This is George Fenneman reminding you to tune in again at the same time for Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. DeSoto and the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers from Coast to Coast present Groucho Marx. In You Bet Your Life. 
now, here he is, the one, the only... <laughs> For the first time in nine years, we had somebody up here who talked more than I did. And we ran out of time. And George, you tell him what we decided to do. Well, uh, last week, week, Mrs. Uh... Not last week. It's... <laughs> That's how I feel. Last week, uh, Mrs. That's uh... Donald Meek. <laughs> last week, Mrs. Esther Bradley and her partner, Joe Egbert, uh, used up all our time. So uh, we asked the other couples on our show last week if they'd come back tonight. And they said they would to play You Bet Your Life. And so is Ms. Mrs. Bradley is here. Uh, Joe Egbert is here. And another partner that she picked up along the way, uh, uh, he's a... Um, he volunteered, I think. He's a sailor. Yeah. So uh, I guess they're all here now, and the show starts over just like a regular show, and we're going to play You Bet Your Life, and the one that wins the most money gets the chance at the $1,000 question. That's right. Now, if either of our couples tonight say the secret word, the duck will come down and pay him an extra $100. And the word tonight is uh, door. All right, George, let's go now. <laughs> Mrs. Helen Swartz, Mr. Isaac Cashton are first, first Groucho. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet... Groucho Marx. Say the secret word and you'll split a hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Mr. Isaac Cashdan and Mrs. Helen Schwartz. Hmm? Mrs. Schwartz, may I call you Helen? Yes, Mr. Marx, you may, but oh. everybody calls me Mama. Well, if everybody calls you Mama, I don't want to be with the riffraff. I'll call you Mrs. Schwartz. <laughs> Where are you from, Mrs. Schwartz? Paraguay? Sooner or later, no. somebody's bound to be from Paraguay on this. I'm from Hungary. Uruguay? What? Huh? Hungry lotions. Oh, I'm hungry. from Hunger too, but where are you from? <laughs> hungry lotions. Hungry lotions? Lotions is the name lotions. of the city. Oh, the city. I thought it was yes. something you got at the delicatessen, huh? <laughs> what do you remember about this uh, obscure village? Not much. I was about six years old when I left there. Oh, that's about and, uh, uh, 35 oh. years ago, huh? <laughs> yes. Uh, oh. How did you meet your husband, Helen? I assume you have one. Yes, I do. I met him at the dance, Mr. Marx. Kazatsky? Uh, no, Chardash. Oh. I thought that was something you get in a delicatessen. <laughs> <laughs> What's a Chardash? It's a Hungarian dance. Could you give us a sample of it? Surely, but uh, not alone. I couldn't. Would you? Ah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I have no idea how you do this, but I'm certainly willing to try. What do you do? You... Could you give us a Chardash over there, Jack? <laughs> We get acquainted fast up here. Huh? <laughs> now, let's see. Your name is Isaac Ashcan. No, Groucho. It's Cash Dan. Oh, you're a Japanese Cash Dan. Is that it? Huh? Something like that. Sometimes what? they say cash down. Oh. That's when they want to get a laugh, I guess. Something huh? like that. <laughs> well, what is your claim to fame, Isaac? Well, almost everybody has. Are you a midget race driver? No, I'm a chess player. Chess? Are you a good player? My title is International Grandmaster. That's very impressive. <laughs> now, what is an international grandmaster? Is that anything like a local shave master? <laughs> Not quite. That's the highest title you can get in chess besides the world's champion. Mm -hmm. There are just three of us in the United States, and I think something like 27 in the entire world. You must be pretty good, huh? Well, they sometimes say that. Oh. Doesn't frighten me in the least, Isaac. <laughs> I'll challenge you to a chess game any day of the week and bet you five hundred dollars. Are you game? I'll tell you, Grouch. I just have to have a little time tonight, and if you're interested, I'll play a blindfold. <laughs> Why do you want to blindfold yourself? Don't you want to look at me? <laughs> well, I think I can play the game just about as well. You really think you could beat me blindfolded? I've played several people at the same time blindfolded and done pretty well, Groucho. Of course, you realize if you're blindfolded, I'm going to cheat. <laughs> well, they have referees when they do this. And if I have any choice in the referee, I'll make sure he watches you as carefully as he does me. It's pretty hard to cheat in chess because there are very standard international rules. And if you follow the rules, this is one game where you really can't cheat. If I can't cheat, forget it. The only fun I have playing any game is cheating. <laughs> Chess is a little over my head. Uh, 
Well, actually, my chest is below my head, but I... <laughs> Could you give me a sample play? I mean, a simple one that Mrs. Schwartz and I would understand? Well, I'll give you a game of chess, which I think is fairly simple. White starts, plays pawn to king four, and black plays pawn to king four. And white goes bishop to bishop four, and black makes the same reply. And white goes queen to rook five. Black's answer is king knight to bishop three. Mm. White plays queen takes pawn, checkmate, the game is over. <laughs> and who has the $500? <laughs> Mrs. Schwartz, will you give him $500 for me? Huh? <laughs> well, I've heard you have to be a mathematical genius to be a good chess player. Is this true, or could a fellow like me take it up? Well, you don't have to be a mathematical genius or a wizard of any kind. You can be illiterate, uneducated, and still play a pretty good game of chess. Isaac, you've described me to a T. <laughs> Shake hands with the next world's champion. And I'm still going to cheat. <laughs> Mr. Schwartz, what's your hobby? Uh, are you a chess player or do you j prefer ice hockey? No, Mr. Marx. My hobby is movies. Movies? You just like some place to go to take your shoes off, is that it? <laughs> You're popcorn happy. Eh? <laughs> That's right. What kind of pictures do you like? Musicals, dramas, westerns, or comedies? Oh, I don't care what they are, as long as Tony Curtis is in them. <laughs> Well, that's the way I feel. I don't care what kind of a picture it is, as long as it doesn't have Tony Curtis in it. Oh, no. Well, why Tony Curtis, Mama? What's so fascinating about him? Oh, because he's just the handsomest man on, on the site. Yeah. He's so wonderful, and, and uh, when he, he's got talent, and those big blue eyes, and he's on the screen. You just can't help but you just lose yourself. <laughs> Aren't you a little old to be a Bobby Soxer? I should think you'd prefer someone more mature, like Clark Gable, or Bogart, or Freddie Bartholomew. <laughs> why, why Tony Curtis? Because I'm his mother. Re really? <laughs> well, no wonder your criticism is so impartial. <laughs> Does Tony come from a theatrical family? Well, his father was a, an actor in Budapest, Hungary. He, what, did you know this when you married him? Uh, yes. Well, do you have any talent outside of uh, type sickery? No. I just used to sing a little bit, but uh, when... Uh, well, how much I... singing did you do? Were you on the stage? No, no, no. Mr. Marx. I just uh, once called my Tony through the window, called him to come in, and I can't to neighbor ours heard me, and he, he came right over and he says, uh, sink. He said, and sink? Were you in sink. the river? <laughs> <laughs> he told me to sink for him. Oh, who did this? Uh, a canter. Oh. Boy, that canter doesn't overlook a trick, does it? <laughs> well, you're a nice couple, and I hope you get married someday. <laughs> now, Mrs. Schwartz, I've kidded you about your son, but actually I know Tony. I've had yes. dinner with him in New York. He's a good actor. He's a cute guy, and he's one of the biggest box office draws in the whole movie industry. Thank you, sir. And you can be very proud of them. I presume you both know how to play your bet your life? Now, you selected Lon London, Paris, and Rome as your category. These are questions on the three major European capitals. Let's see you know what you know about them. Remember, the more the questions, worth the harder it is. Have you ever played chess, George? <laughs> no, I... Uh... You have any knowledge of it at all? None whatsoever. Uh, I've yet to find any subject that you have any knowledge of. <laughs> All right, now what do you want to start with? Uh, 10, 20, 50 to 100. Oh, the, the small sums are oh. obviously easier than the big ones. 100 to 100. There is a famous district of wharves and warehouses that is the residential area for the Chinese population of London. What is this district called? It's in London. I believe it's the East End, Groucho. No, it was a famous song written about it. It's, that, 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 it's Limehouse. Well, you lost half your hundred, you still have fifty dollars. Now what are you going to go for? Ninety? Ninety? Mm -hmm. All right, Paris has two chief airports. One is Orly, O-R-L-Y. What is the name of the other one? Very famous in history.
Okay. It's La Borge. It's where Lindbergh landed. That's right. You now have $25. Oh, well, this is just awful for a chess champion. <laughs> you want to go for 80? Shall we try? Let's try. 80, all right. What is the name of the building formerly used as a place of imprisonment that now houses the crown jewels of England? It's the Tower of London. That's right, the Tower of London. $105. Now, 70? I guess we'll try for 70. It's your last chance to beat the other couples. On how many hills was Rome originally built? And I want the exact number. Seven hills. Seven? You must be an old dice shooter. Seven is right. <laughs> up with $175. Oh, yeah. In the old days, you had to shift gears with clumsy controls like this. Wasn't easy. Later, the gear shift moved up in the world to the steering column. And then the automatic transmissions brought complicated dials and levers that were impressive, but sometimes confusing. But now, here's the quickest, smoothest, easiest method of drive selection ever invented. DeSoto's great new push-button driving. A positive mechanical control. To put the car in any driving range, just push a button and go. DeSoto push-button driving is safer, too. It's out of children's reach, and it's designed so you can't make a mistake. Push-button driving is easier and safer. And to see just how fast and smooth it is, watch this professional stunt driver. Now, push-button driving is such an obvious improvement, competing cars will imitate it next year or the year after. But DeSoto has push-button driving now. So why wait? Tomorrow, drive a beautiful new DeSoto with push-button driving. You can enjoy the best this summer. Drive and price a DeSoto tomorrow. Nacho, Mrs. Rose Westlake and Mr. Miguel Pimel are waiting to talk to you. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Rose Westlake and Miguel Pinel. Rose, where are you from? San Francisco. I was born there right a few months before the earthquake. Earthquake? Mm-hmm. Fire, you mean, don't you? Well, it was both. But the earthquake oh. started it. Oh. Don't you ever go back to Frisco, then? Oh, I like Frisco when I'm there. I like here when I'm there. I like every place when I'm there. Oh, do you? Mm -hmm. Are you married, Rose? Uh, no, I'm a widow. Widow, huh? Have you thought about uh, getting married again? No, I, I have a one-track mind, and I, I've had the nesting urge so badly now, I just want to settle down and just feel like I belong someplace. You have a nesting urge? Mm hmm Well, Rose, you're welcome to use my avocado tree any old time you want. <laughs> I only ask one thing of you. Don't cackle before seven in the morning. <laughs> no, Miguel Pinnell, eh? Where are you from, Miguel? Uh, I am from Nicaragua. Nicaragua? Yes, sir. Oh, that's a nice country around there. Whereabouts in Nicaragua? Well, uh, you know, I was born in Granada. It's a, a very small town. Granada's in Spain, isn't it? No, we have another Granada in Nicaragua. Oh. That's very nice, too. Well, were you ever involved in one of the frequent revolutions? Oh, I was just a child then. Oh. Well, don't they have revolutions for children down there, too? <laughs> are, you, are you married, Michael? I'm engaged, you know. You're engaged? Yes. Huh? Well, uh, you mean your gay bachelor days are almost over? Don't you miss playing the field, Miguel? Oh, I have two or three girlfriends to go around with. I see. Yes. These are spares, huh? <laughs> you're engaged and you have three or four girlfriends? Yes, you know. You're a, you're a real scoundrel, Miguel. <laughs> What has your fiancé got to say about your flitting from flower to flower? Oh, she doesn't know that. She's in Nicaragua. <laughs> Back in the old country. Well, you're a Central American Casanova, huh? Oh, do you want to call it that? It's okay. <laughs> well, when, when did you last see your beloved? Well, when I left Nicaragua three years ago. <laughs> Does she still remember you? I hope so. Well, we write each other once in a while, you know. <laughs> I knew Latins were great lovers, but uh, well, if your uh, girl still remembers you after three years, you must be sensational. <laughs> you may be another Groucho Marx. And <laughs> Major, what makes you think your girlfriend hasn't got four or five boyfriends in Nicaragua? 
she may also be flitting from flower to flower. Has that ever occurred to you? Uh, that's why you think, you know, she is very conservative and my sister is watching her for me. <laughs> uh, well, if your sister is anything like you, I have only one question. Who's keeping an eye on your sister? Her husband. Her husband is keeping an eye on your girlfriend? On oh, my sister. Uh, my sister is keeping an eye on my girlfriend. No. Works perfectly. Well, what do you regard as perfect? I mean, you have her sitting home at night there? Or? Well, uh, she's planning to come over, over the United States, you know, meet me and marry me. Oh. I mean, my girlfriend. That means you'll have to discard all these other... Uh... Yes, sir. You and said... don't you regret that? I do regret it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you write to your sister and prevail upon your girlfriend to remain in Nicaragua? No, because uh, I have to get married someday, you know, so better sooner than later. <laughs> Don't you think so? Well, you're uh, kind of conditioned to this now, huh? That's it, you said. <laughs> but where do you work, Romeo? I mean, Miguel. Uh... Romeo, well, you Romeo works at uh, Cape Hardware Company. You work for a hardware company? Yes, huh? sir. Well, do you have any outside interests, uh, hobbies or anything? Oh, yes, well, uh, I would like to be an actor, you know, and uh, taking lessons now. What have you learned about acting? Uh? Well, uh, we, have, we have had some uh, basics, you know, uh, very simple things that are very important to, for acting. Basic? Uh, yeah, like a sitting, how to stand right, you know, things like that. You had to learn the right and the wrong way to sit down? Yeah, both, so well, you can what see the you, difference. Could you show us how you sit down? Well, uh, I would like to try I'll get to... A George, no, I'll get a chance. <laughs> George, bring out a chair. I've never seen a Central American sit down. I'd like to see... Ah, uh, you will sit. Now you sit in a chair. I may have been doing it all wrong all these years. Well, uh, it's uh, kind of too close, you know. I'm going to go over there and then back and sit down. Okay, okay, well, you go over there, but come back again, huh? Oh, I will, for sure. Now you show us the correct way to sit down. Yes, you know, you come over here to sit down. And then, you know, you can use your head naturally. Mm -hmm. And there you are. That's pretty good. You huh? know, that's the uh, correct way. Now show us the show us the incorrect way. Oh, the incorrect way can be done too many different ways, you know. You can come over here, sit down, like that. <laughs> Miguel, I predict in just a few short years you'll be getting an Oscar. Mm -hmm. Of course, I also predicted that Pittsburgh would win the World Series. <laughs> now, Rose, how do you feel standing this close to an eminent actor? Are you thrilled? Well, no, you see, I'm used to it. I've been in show business all my life. You've been in show business? Mm -hmm. Really? Okay. I should have realized you were in show business. You have that air about you. What did you do? Shakespeare, Moliere, Shaw, Chekhov? No, I'm Fifi, the sheep headed girl on the side show. The sheep headed girl? That's right. Well, Rose, you look perfectly normal to me. In fact, you look very good. In what way are you sheep headed? Are you fond of wool gathering? On the gathering? head. Huh? On the head. I don't understand this. Well, you see, I carried around this way. I never cut off my act. You see, I didn't cut off part of this. is rather unexpected, or I could probably do it better. Well, let me hold your hat. Maybe that'll Oh, that's make it wonderful of you. I just love being to hold things for me. Don't go away with it. No, oh, I say. Won't. Well, I'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> Has she gone yet? Oh, <laughs> The house. Oh, that's very interesting. When I was about three or four years old, my hair just started getting funny, and everybody said, oh, the little girl looks like a sheep, and all that sort of thing. So there's only two things to do if you have something that's odd. You either conceal it or you reveal it. So I decided to cash in on it. Fate handed me a lemon. I made lemonade out of it, so I just turned myself into Fifi. Fee -fee. <laughs> Well, what did you do in this act now that you got the hair like that? Well, first of all, the man would introduce me. He would say, now, ladies and gentlemen, we present the inimitable Fifi. Now, that's me. Now, my friends, I'm called Fifi, the sheep-headed girl. I'm sure you may look at me and know why. I was discovered living among the natives by a band of British surveyors, believing me to be a child that had been kidnapped by the natives or perhaps a child of missionaries that had perished in the jungle, or even perhaps a native of some race that never has been discovered. Maybe the reason so many explorers never came home. Okay, that's fine. Huh? Well, I certainly hope I never sit in back of you at a hair-raising movie. You got 
got a great act, Rose. But what do you do for an encore? Well, for an encore, I could go into my dance. Oh, well, let's have that, too. You want to huh? get the joint cold? <laughs> what, what music do you use? What kind of music? Oh, some Hawaiian music. Some Hawaiian music, Jack, huh? <laughs> Well, I'm off to the South Seas in the morning. Well, you're certainly a couple of odd fellas, and I'd like to go on talking to you. Too. I'd like to go on talking to you two, but the odd fellas are meeting tonight, so let's play your bet your life. <laughs> you both know how to play the game? Well, I've yeah. played some games. I don't know about this one. Well... <laughs> well, this may be a little mild, Rose, but it won't take long. Huh? <laughs> are you selected cities of foreign countries? Yes, sir. And your partners, and one answer between you. I'll give you the name of two cities of a foreign country. <laughs> I'll give you the names of two cities of a foreign country, and you tell me the name of the country. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, what do you want to start with? 10, 20, 30, up to 100? About 50. 50? 50, yes. All right, here are the cities. Valparaiso and Santiago. What is the country? Chile. Chile is right. We now have one hundred fifty dollars. Uh, seventy-five. No, seventy or eighty. Uh, eighty, make it. Eighty. Mm-hmm. Here are the cities: Calgary and Windsor. What is the country? Uh, say again, please. Calgary and Windsor. Canada. Canada is correct. We now have two hundred thirty dollars. Now, what are you going to go? Uh, make it 60. $60. $60. Mm -hmm. Here are the cities. Auckland, A-U-C-K-L-A-N-D, and Wellington. You tell me the country. Australia. United States. Auckland and Wellington. Make the United States. No, it's New Zealand. New Zealand? You were close, Australia. But... Mm -hmm. You lost half of your 230. You now have $115. All right. Now, you still have something to go. Well, make it 60 again. 60? No, mm -hmm. you've had, so you've failed on 60. I wouldn't try that again. <laughs> Although well, this time you'd probably know the answer. <laughs> okay, let's try. 40? No, I'd say 60. 70? 70, okay. You've had 60. 70, yeah? Uh -huh. Here are the cities, Bonn and Cologne. B-O-N-N -N and Cologne. Now you tell me the country. Germany. Germany is right. Don't go any further. Huh? And you wind up with $185. Well, And that means that in just one minute, Mrs. Esther Bradley and her partners, Joe Egbert and Pat Hunt, who won $275 last week, are still high and get the chance at the $1,000 question. Whether you want a dependable car for that son in college, a second car for your wife's shopping trips, or a late model low mileage family car, your DeSoto Plymouth dealer can serve you. He has used cars for every purse and purpose. So if you're in the market for a good used car at a really fair price, you'll be wise to hurry to your nearby DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And when you're there, look for the used cars bearing this TV sticker. TV stands for top value. Remember, your DeSoto Plymouth dealer is the only place in town where you can get top value used cars. And now, Groucho, here are Mrs. Esther Bradley, Mr. Joe Egbert, and Pat Hunt, all set for the $1,000 question. I'm right back in here. You get in the Esther, I'm glad to see you again. We had a lot of fun last week, and I'm happy to see you finally get the chance at the big question. And, uh, Mr. Egbert, have you worked out a satisfactory way of uh, dividing the money with the sailor if you should win? Yes, Groucho, we've decided that we'll split it three ways. Well, I think that's very fair. You feel all right about this? Yes, sir. Uh, well, uh, what would you do uh, with your share if you should win tonight? Uh? Well, with three children, Groucho, I'm You have three children? Yes, sir. Oh. You don't have a, a girl in every port, huh? 
All right, now let's go. And uh, good luck to all of you. Now, here's the big question. We're going to go for $1,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you, so think carefully and please no help in the audience. On December 2nd, 1955, the American Federation of Labor and the Congress of Industrial Organizations merged into a single union. For $1,000, who is the first president of the AFL-CIO? Now, you can talk it over, the three of you. All right, what is the answer you three have decided upon? Was, uh, pardon, was that the, uh, the president of this uh, current union? Yes, yes, it's the president of the current union. Mm. What'd you say before? Sounded better. <laughs> no. It's the, it's the president right at the present time. Yeah, well, what is it? Who is it? Uh, George Meany. George Meany is right. <laughs> $1,000, and how much did they win in the quiz, George? Uh, Sounds like a dog food. Oh, that's me, huh? <laughs> Well, here I am again with $2,500 for one of our couples. And if any of them say the secret word, the duck will fly down and pay him $100. And the word tonight is clock. Okay, duck. Well, Groucho, uh, this is Wanda Clumper and Mr. Roger Sharkey are waiting to talk to you. So, folks, could you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Mrs. Uh, Wandra Klumpner, is that right? Klump? That's right. I'll start with you. Uh, where, where is your hometown, Wanda? My hometown is from Sommerfeld, Niederlausitz. It's about five hours from Berlin, Germany. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> now, what is it like in Sommerfeld in the Niederlausitz in the Schnitzelbank, huh? Kutzelang. Kutzenlang, eh? Kutzenlang. Kutzenlang in a schnitzelbank. I do shame it. You know that song? Oh, yeah. Yes, that's the same thing. Take a frau. Take a frau. Yeah, that's the same thing. Take a frau. 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 Mr. Sharkey, that's you, huh? Yes, sir. What is your first name again? Uh... Roger. Where are you from, Rog? I was born in County Roscommon, Ireland. Sure, and you were born in Ireland? I was. <laughs> in Roscommon, eh? Yes, sir. What sort of work did you do in Ireland? I was farming. You were farming? Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't know they did much farming. Well, we raised cattle there. That's cattle? Mm-hmm. In Ireland? And I was kind of a cowboy when I was young. Oh, a cowboy. Mm -hmm. Sort of an Irish Roy Rogers, huh? Well, you're did you in that order. Did you play a guitar? No. You say you can't sit on a horse and play a harp. Well, no, that's right. I have uh, violins over there. Um, you ride a horse and play a violin, huh? Well, not so good. <laughs> did you ever meet Rubinoff, the violinist, while over there? No, I never did. No. I don't think he was ever there. No, I don't think so. How did you meet Mrs. Sharkey, Roger? I haven't met her yet, sir. <laughs> you haven't met her yet? Not yet. You mean you're a, you're a single man? Mm-hmm. Well, how do you explain this? Is it just the look of the Irish? Well, I tell you, people seem to come from the Irish Free State, you see, and you've got a certain amount of liberty there, see. You keep making jokes like that, and England will let the other half of Ireland go, huh? <laughs> well, they don't want half of it yet. They don't? No, no, they just want a small portion of it now. What sort of work does your husband do? Oh, no, I mean you. 
I, what sort of work does your husband do? Uh, you're, you're married, I presume. I am. You, and what sort of work does your husband He's do? He's a pastry baker. Pastry? We have a pastry, a little pastry shop on 1739 Northwestern Avenue in Hollywood. Oh. And if you ever be in that neighborhood culture, I'd love to have you come and I'll serve Would you a good cup of coffee. Oh. The little apple strudel. Throw uh, apple strudel? Mm -hmm. Are you a good strudel manufacturer? Well, I'll let my husband do the cooking and the baking. Uh -huh. How good a baker is your husband, just in case I might get carried away and order some of his pastry? Papa Chin is the best pastry baker in the whole country. Was haben Sie gesagt? Ich habe gesagt, Papa Chin is the best pastry baker in the country. That's his name, Papa Chin? His name is Rudolph. Oh. <laughs> Is he the red-nosed Papa Chin? Uh, <laughs> well, I'd like to go on talking to you two, but the time has come to play your bet your life. You select the geography. Uh, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, what do you want to start with? You know, the easy questions are 10, 20, 30, 40, and then they get more difficult as you progress. Shall we start with 100? 100. The 100 all right. In what range of mountains do you find uh, Mount Blanc and the Jungfrau? In, um... Switzerland. In what range of mountains? Oh. What is the mountains called? Mm. Alps. Uh, the Alps is right, yes. <laughs> wow. yes. Yes, you're off to a good start. You have two hundred dollars. Wanda, that's a fair good. Oh, thank you. This is the Alps, yeah. <laughs> that comes uh, from scallops, each thing. Uh, we have uh, uh, five hundred dollars. Mm. What will you do in this month? Um. Mm. We feel? Ninety. Ninety dollar. All right. In what country is New South Wales? Uh, now talk it over, your partners. Mm -hmm. Now don't answer until you... Australia. Australia is right. Huh? You now have two hundred ninety dollars. You have practically climbed the Jungfrau. <laughs> <laughs> you have now five hundred and ninety dollars. What will you do in this month? Eighty. Eighty. Achtzig. Achtzig. Yeah. In what state is directly south of Kansas? Now talk it over. Don't jump at conclusions. What state is directly south of Kansas? Here is Kansas. Now what is underneath? <laughs> Arizona? No, I'm sorry. Well, you lost half your 290, you now have $145. All right, now don't get discouraged. You still have a lot of money. Now, this is the last one, the last chance to be the other couples. What are you going to go for? 70. 70? Okay. In what country do you find the steps? S-T-E-P-P-E-S. -E -P -P Talk it over. No, I don't Talk it over. S-T-E-P-P-E-S. -E That's the way it's spelled. Well, take a guess if you don't know. Austria? No. No. It is Russia. You wind up with $72.50. Wow. Wonderful. In the old days, you had to shift gears with clumsy controls like this. Wasn't easy. Later, the gear shift moved up in the world to the steering column. And then automatic transmissions brought complicated dials and levers that were impressive, but sometimes confusing. But now, here's the quickest, smoothest, easiest method of drive selection ever invented. DeSoto's great new push-button driving. A positive mechanical control. To put the car in any driving range, just push a button and go. DeSoto push-button driving is safer, too. It's out of children's reach and it's designed so you can't make a mistake. Push-button driving is easier and safer. And to see just how fast and smooth it is, watch this professional stunt driver. Now, push-button driving is such an obvious improvement, competing cars will imitate it next year or the year after. But DeSoto has push-button driving now, so why wait? Tomorrow, drive a beautiful new DeSoto with push-button driving. You can enjoy the best this summer. Drive and price a DeSoto tomorrow.
Doctor, uh, we invited some young ladies who work for a swimsuit company to the show tonight. Oh, you're cooking with gas. <laughs> and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected uh, Mrs. Lynn Armstrong to be on our show. Her partner is Mr. Tom Blazina. Folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your bet your life. Say the secret word and divide a hundred dollars. The common way is something you find around the house. Lynn Armstrong, I presume that's you. That's it you, is. huh? And uh, Tom Blazina, that must be you, huh? Right, sir. Mrs. Armstrong, uh, Mr. Fenneman says you're with a bathing suit concern. Is that true? That's right. Girls' bathing suits, I presume. Exclusively. Now, what company do you work for, Lynn? Coal of California. Are your mm -hmm. bathing suits any different than the uh, other types? Well, cold swimsuits fit more people than most other swimsuits. Could you give me that again? Uh, <laughs> Our what do you mean? Fit fit more people. people. Even well, in a bathing suit, I should imagine three's a crowd. <laughs> <laughs> well, just one at a time, Groucho. But uh, there, of course, is an average figure, and then there are many variations of the average yeah. figure. And our suit is designed to fit the average figure plus the variation. Mm -hmm. it's like variations on a theme by Paganini? Would it be like <laughs> anything like that? Something like that. that. Mr. Blazina? That's Where's your mean? hometown? Slavica, Croatia, Yugoslavia. Well, Yugoslavia, and I'll go my way, huh? <laughs> you come from Yugoslavia, huh? Marshall Tito country, huh? That's right. Doctor. How old were you when you came to this country? I was 11 years old. Uh -huh. How long have you been here? I've been here 50 years. And you came when you were 11? 11 exactly. And you're 61 years old? Correct. Well, you're a remarkable-looking man for 61. You look like Benny Rubin, only 10 years younger. <laughs> What sort of work do you do, Tom? That's a kind of an odd name for a Yugoslavian, isn't it? I'm a retired foreman. I don't oh, work. You don't work, huh? You don't work at all? No, I don't. You mean you've got a television show, too? <laughs> <laughs> no, I watch yours, Roger. Mm. Well, that's work to some people. <laughs> Are you married, uh, Tom? I am, Roger. Well, has anything exciting ever happened to you since you left Yugoslavia? Well, Groucho, one of the greatest thrills of my life happened to me when we had an odd break with Villa and General Pershing went down to Mexico to chase him. And we, of the National Guard units like Wisconsin, Illinois, and them were sent up into one division on the Mexican border. And a young lieutenant just graduated a year previous to that by name of Eisenhower. Tom, have you ever seen the president since those old days? Uh, one of the greatest thrills of my life, Groucho, I prayed that when I was on the border that I'd have a boy like him. And uh, when the cadets graduated in 1946, I placed, watched the parade. I placed myself along the walk with thousands of people around. And as he was coming through, escorted by Maxwell Taylor, the superintendent of the academy at the time, he came up within about 15 feet from me. And when he did, I clicked to, you know, braced up, I hollered out, General Eisenhower, Sergeant Blazina, Fighting Irish, 7th Illinois, reporting, sir. <laughs> of course, I held a salute. My hand shakes now, Groucho. So what do you uh, do? Have you caught Marshall? <laughs> well, it could have been all of that if he hadn't been a human being. Uh, General Taylor pulled him over. He thought he had a drunk on his hands, uh -huh. you know. <laughs> and Ike looked at me, jerked his arm away from Taylor, and walked up halfway. Big smile busted out over his face, and he saluted. When he did, I came to attention, and he made one leap for me, and grabbed me around the neck, and shook my hand, and said, Sergeant, Sergeant, what are you doing here? He thought I was that hunky on a border, you know. <laughs> yeah, I said, as he did that, tears rolled down my cheeks. I couldn't hold my emotion. I said, General, my boy just passed in review for your approval. Grab me, Sergeant, Sergeant, come on up here. We got to tell these people where we were back 37 years ago. He said, uh, I, uh, how long was that hike? I said, well, it lasted about three weeks. How, how many miles? I said, 213 miles. That really was a tough hike, wasn't it, Sergeant? I grabbed him around the neck. Wait a minute. <laughs> Didn't you ride a horse? This is not Eisen. This is not Eisenhower. 
Well, apparently you have a real devotion to the president, and I don't blame you. He looks like a real nice guy. Have you done anything to show him how much you like him? I voted for him with all the sincerity at my command. Just once? Well, I got many thousands of others to go along with me. If you'd have uh, any kind of a friend, you'd have voted half a dozen times. <laughs> I'm surprised you aren't the ambassador to Yugoslavia. <laughs> well, I'd like to continue this conversation, but the time has come to play you bet your life. In the race for the $2,500, the first couple won $72.50, and the secret word is clock. Now remember, we start you off with $100, and if you miss a question, you lose half of your bank roll. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. You selected American history. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. What do you want to start with? Mm -hmm. 10, 20, 50, all the way up to 100. 70. 70. Is that all right with you? Mm -hmm. One answer between you now. Okay. All right. The people of what country presented the Statue of Liberty to the United States? France. France, France is right. You have $170. Mm -hmm. All right, now what? 80. $80. At what place in West Virginia did John Brown's historic raid take place? Uh, Talk it over. That Hampton Ferry, or Harper's Ferry, something like that. Hampton Ferry. Harper's Ferry? Harper's Ferry is right, huh? You now I have $250. Did you say you were in the Civil War or this, uh, <laughs> the Mexican War? Well, if we had more time, I'd sing you a song. <laughs> but... Well, luckily, our time is short. Now we have... <laughs> $250. Now, what are you going to go for? Come on, little ones 90. are easy. 90 When the Second Continental Congress established the United States Post Office in 1775, who did they pick to be the first Postmaster General? Talk it over. Who was the first Postmaster General? The Second Continental Congress. If you don't know, guess. Mm -hmm. Hard or something like that. Hard. Hard. No, it's Benjamin Franklin. No. Well, you lost half your two fifty. You now have one hundred twenty-five dollars. All right, you still got one hundred twenty-five. What are you going to go for? Let's go a hundred. All right. Hundred. One of the great moments of history came with the surrender of Cornwallis to George Washington. Where did the surrender occur? Uh, in New York. Where did Cornwallis surrender mm -hmm. to George Washington? Cornwallis. Mm -hmm. Valley Forge. And this is a pretty easy one. Even I knew this. It's Yorktown. Oh. Ah, it's too bad. Well, you wind up with $62.50. Too bad. This is the California desert. A real desert of deep, loose sand, treacherous soft shoulders, blistering heat. And this is a lovely 1954 DeSoto automatic on the desert road. Now watch. We're driving this DeSoto automatic out into the sand. In an ordinary car, it would be almost impossible to move or steer in this type of sand. Watch this, though. The world's newest and finest fully automatic transmission, power flight transmission, lets the DeSoto automatic accelerate smoothly, steadily, evenly with great power, even here. And steering is simple, even through heavy, treacherous sand with DeSoto full-time power steering. The power steering that works for you all the time makes turning the steering wheel as easy as dialing a phone. There are hundreds of reasons why this lovely 1954 DeSoto deserves the name automatic. Reasons you should discover for yourself. Go to your DeSoto Plymouth dealer soon. See and drive the beautiful, stylish, distinctive 1954 DeSoto automatic. It's available in two full series, the mighty 170 horsepower Fire Dome 8 and the brilliant Power Master 6. Convince yourself that this year, DeSoto puts you ahead. We have a housewife for you now, Groucho. I uh, read about her in the paper and called her up and asked her to be on our show. She's Mrs. Corrine Clark. Her partner is also a special guest, one of the Los Angeles City Councilmen, Mr. Gordon Hahn. So folks, would you come in please and meet Groucho Marx. Say the secret word and divide a hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Ow. Uh. <laughs> Corrine Clark and Councilman Gordon Hahn, huh? Councilman Hahn, it's an honor to have you here, and I'd like to shake your hand. Just a minute, I take this ring off, huh? 
<laughs> Nothing personal, Mr. Hahn. I always slip my ring off when I shake hands with anybody in politics. <laughs> all right, you wouldn't want to see if my cuffs are still here. Eh? <laughs> uh, Gordon, by the way, is it all right for me to call a councilman by his first name? Well, they call me Curly normally. <laughs> I've heard of politicians make fantastic claims, but this one skins them all. <laughs> Corrine Clark, huh? Is that the way you pronounce it, Corrine? No, Groucho, it's Corinne. Corinne, huh? Are you a housewife, uh, Corinne? Yes, Groucho. Pretty good-looking housewife. What sort of work does your husband do? Uh? He's a court reporter. A cork reporter? You mean court. pulls them out of bottles, huh? <laughs> no, uh, he works in the court. Oh, he in the takes... courtroom. Oh, I see. Gordon, how did you meet your wife? I presume you uh, have a wife. Oh, huh? I'm not married, Groucho. You're not married? No. Some nerve. How can you be a city father if you're a bachelor? <laughs> Not easy. No, it isn't. <laughs> well, is this a fairly lucrative job, a councilman? I mean, the pay that shows up on the tax return. I'm a... Uh... Well, councilman in Los Angeles had a raise once in a quarter of a century, and I think the people are going to have another chance this next year. We make, uh, on an average, of approximately 20 cents more an hour than the head janitor. <laughs> so what's a head janitor? Is yeah, that a psychoanalyst? <laughs> Oh, he's in, <laughs> he's in charge of the maintenance in the city hall, Groucho. Oh. You'd do better as a plumber, wouldn't you, eh? Well, the plumbers do get more per uh, hour, yeah. yeah. Carpenters, any Yes, they all get more. Yeah. Of course, their jobs are more important, too. <laughs> I mean, if the pipes in my bathroom are clogged up, a councilman wouldn't do me much good, then. Now, what are you city fathers doing about smog, Gordon? Well, smog... Besides choking over it like the rest of us. The smog problem's uh, in control of the uh, smog control district. But yes. the city council has two aspects of smog they can take care of. One is the incinerator, and you know we changed the hours of burning to let everyone know that the incinerator yes. does puff smoke. That's true, and now they have the stink in the evening instead of in the morning, huh? <laughs> We're setting the problem of perhaps picking up combustible rubbish. We're the only large city in the United States that uh, allows the burning of the combustible rubbish in the backyard. It seems to me the only thing they do about the smog is each day I see a new man is appointed to the head of the board. <laughs> <laughs> now, as a city official, Gordon, you must get a lot of requests, strange ones from your constituents, like... Uh, drop dead. <laughs> well, we do. Have you had any uh, other unusual demands? Uh, quite a few. Just this last week, the letters I received. One was on this garbage problem. Uh, a person suggested that we fly the garbage out to the desert. I mean, no Palm Springs? <laughs> uh, what is another one there? Uh, another one was the uh, a request from a constituent asking that the children on the streetcars be prohibited from making faces at the pedestrians walking down the street. I don't know what we're going to do about that. No, I don't think that's part of your job. But those are I would give the... that to the smog control. Huh? <laughs> those uh, are just a few of those. Well, you must lead a very, unusual interesting, uh, a very interesting life, Gordon. Very interesting ground. Now, Corin, uh, you're a citizen of Los Angeles, and we have a councilman up here. Do you have any problems uh, that you'd like taken care of? Well, I have woodpeckers in my cocoa palm. <laughs> Could you give us that again? Uh, I'm not quite sure that that's what I heard. I have woodpeckers in my cocoa palms. You have woodpeckers in your cocoa palms? That's right. Well, keep your hat on and nobody will notice it. <laughs> what in the blue blazes are you talking about? <laughs> well, Groucho, about three weeks ago, I live in the valley and a flock of woodpeckers came and took up residence in my two tall... Cocoa ponds. Mm -hmm. They have since made my life miserable. They pound and they squawk, and early they start early in the morning. They disturb our sleep, our rest, our peace. How do you know there's the Western Union Telegraph Office? <laughs> well, um, they sound more like riveters than the uh, than a linotype. 
Yes. Well, you had a naughty problem there, Corinne. <laughs> I'm sure the councilman and I could put our heads together and come up with some solution. Oh, I hope so. Gordon, what do you think we should do? And don't say raise taxes. <laughs> <laughs> well, generally when a new problem comes to the council, this is a strange one. We generally refer it to a committee for a two-week study. Uh -huh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> I don't know just about this one, uh, uh, what we could do about it. I have ideas on it. But, I don't uh, think it's important what you do as long as you form a committee. That's the main thing. <laughs> Well, now that we promised to do something about Mrs. Clark's woodpeckers, let's play you bet your life. In the race for the $2,500, the first couple still leads with $72.50. You selected a general information quiz, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, the little questions, you know, are easy, and the big money are the tough ones. Well... $90 the first right. time. Uh... All right, what Greek philosopher is associated with a lamp and a search for an honest man? Socrates. Oh, yeah. Socrates. Listen. No, it's Diogenes. Diogenes. You know, they're on the front page of the of the mirror with the lamp one year and the fog and Diogenes and the head. Oh. I'm sorry. Well, that's a shame, man. Well, you lost half a hundred, you now have fifty dollars. Don't get discouraged. That was not too easy. Now what are you going to try? It's up to you. What do you Eighty? Eighty dollars. Eighty? What do you call one-tenth of a cent? A mill? Yeah. A mill. A mill is right. You now have one hundred thirty dollars. Now what? Six Seventy dollars. All right. What would you be charged with if you were arrested for striking another citizen? Assault. Assault and pepper. Assault and battery. <laughs> you now have $200. That's your last chance to be the other couples. What are you going to try? $60. $60. If a Kelly is a hat, what is a brogan? A shoe. It's a shoe. That is right. A shoe. Brogan? Okay. You wind up with $260. Whether you want a dependable car for that son in college, a second car for your wife's shopping trips, or a late model low mileage family car, your DeSoto Plymouth dealer can serve you. He has used cars for every purse and purpose. So if you're in the market for a good used car at a really fair price, you'll be wise to hurry to your nearby DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And when you're there, look for the used cars bearing this TV sticker. TV stands for top value. Remember, your DeSoto Plymouth dealer is the only place in town where you can get top value used cars. All right, here we go for $2,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please not open the audience. The orchestra is going to play one of the best known tunes in the world of music. For $2,500, I want you to tell me who wrote it. And away we go. Richard Wagner. Uh, Richard oh. Wagner, what do you decide? What do you decide? Well, decided? Richard Wagner, I'll take the woman. Oh, Richard the Wagner is right. <laughs> <laughs> right here, huh? That's wonderful. Well, believe a woman, I guess. That's right. <laughs> well, you sneak through under the wire that time. If you weren't so bald, we would never have given it to you, huh? <laughs> I should have had that Diogenes, though. That bothers me. Yes, <laughs> you win $2,500 plus how much in the quiz, George? $260 in the quiz. What are you going to do with all that swag? Move back to Sacramento? Well, uh, <laughs> no, I have an aunt, 80 years of age, who hasn't had a trip since uh, she was in World War I as a Red Cross nurse. Well, she send her to Sacramento. <laughs> well, I'm going to try to get her a trip to Honolulu. She's always wanted to take it. Well, so, that's, that's a very, uh, very nice thing to do, Gordon. And if she comes back wearing a grass skirt, I'll know who to uh, blame her.
please. Oh, that's me. <laughs> well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples. If any of them say the secret word, the, buck, the duck will fly down and pay him a hundred dollars. Oh, the duck is here already, huh? <laughs> the secret word tonight, the, the word is hand. Okay, beat it. Well, Groucho, we have a young married couple for you. They volunteered just before the show started. So, Lieutenant and Mrs. Puses, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word and you'll take home an extra hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you always have with you. <laughs> Lieutenant and Mrs. Irving Puses, eh? Lieutenant, what kind of a name is Puses? Uh, it's a Polish name. Oh. What part of Poland are you from? I was born in Portland, Oregon. Is that behind the Iron Curtain now? <laughs> Mrs. Uh, Puses, huh? Uh, what is your first name? My first name is Kelly. Kelly, huh? Eh? Kelly Puses, huh? Eh? Is there anything like Kelly Poole? Well, I don't know. What is Kelly Poole? What is Kelly Poole? Well, yes. that's uh, something that you play with little numbers, and you each, everyone gets a number. And if you hit the ball that corresponds to this little number, why, well, that's Kelly Poole. Oh, thank you. You're quite welcome. <laughs> I used to be a bum on Vine Street, that's all right. <laughs> what uh, branch of the Army are you in? Uh, I'm in the medical corps, Groucho. I'm a doctor. Oh, you're a doctor? Yes. Yeah. I should have known you were a doctor. Isn't there some a symbol on your uniform there? Yes, you can tell by my caduceus. <laughs> well, if you keep your head tilted back, nobody will notice. <laughs> now, uh, what is a caduceus? Well, a caduceus is a symbol that stands for a physician. Oh, yeah. let's see. I've seen that symbol. It's a picture of a man in a white coat endorsing cigarettes, isn't it? <laughs> no, actually, that man you see endorsing cigarette is, is an actor, you know, whose medical background consists of a card, an actor's equity, and two aspirins. <laughs> I notice you've got some ribbons on your clavicle. <laughs> we stole that from Fibber, Guy, Guy and Molly. That's their favorite word. Could you tell us what some of them are for, those uh, The uh, red one, uh, Groucho, is the bronze star. The uh, middle one is the Korean campaign with the three battle star campaigns, and the end one is the United Nations uh, ribbon. The top is the combat medics badge. Oh. You got the bronze star? <laughs> well, Kelly, I know most veterans are fairly modest. Would you tell us uh, why he got a medal? Well, the bronze star was given for his tour of duty in Korea. Uh, one of the incidents was the work that Irv did on Pork Chop Hill, where he worked three days and three nights without sleep. You know, there are a great many heroes in battle, in, a, in, in addition to the men who do the shooting. And I think we got one of them right here. Put it there, kid. <laughs> now let's play a Bet Your Life. Here comes our mathematical wizard. <laughs> This is a poor man's Einstein. <laughs> now, let's see how much money you can make. You selected sports. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. We start you off with a $100 bankroll, and when you miss a question, you lose half of whatever you've got. Now, we've added an additional gimmick tonight. If at any time you feel that you have enough money or that you have more money than you feel the other couples are going to get, you can quit without jeopardizing what you have left. Is that clear? I wish it was to me. Now, uh, which question do you want to start with? 10, 40, 50, 80, 100? 50. 50. Who was called the Dean of American Sports Writers? That'd be Henry McLemore? No, he's a good one, but it's Grandlin Rice. Well, you uh, lost half of your original bankroll, which was $100, so you now have $50. Now, uh, now which question do you want? 60. 60. What team won the 1952 and 1953 professional football championships? Detroit Lions. Detroit Lions is correct. You now have one hundred ten dollars. Seventy. Seventy. What do you call the man who calls the cadence on a rowing team? Toxin. That's right. You now have one hundred eighty dollars. Now, uh, you can quit now. You can go ahead. 
can do what you please, but you know, if you lose the last one, instead of having 180, you'll have 90. I don't tell you this to alarm you, but just to warn you. You can take a $10 one, or a 100, or anything you want. You take the 80? 80, all right. Who holds the Royals pole vault record? Uh, Paul Richards. No, I'm sorry, it's Cornelius Warmadam. And you wind up with $90. Well, that's not too bad. Thanks and good luck from the Minnesota Plymouth Hills. Say, George, I've got a question for you. Who was the George Washington Bridge named after? Wait a minute, that's too hard. Here's an easy one. Why is now the best time to buy your used car from a DeSoto Plymouth dealer? Oh, that is an easy one, Groucho. Right now, your DeSoto Plymouth dealer has a good variety of top value used cars to choose from. Whether you want a dependable car for that son in college, a second car for your wife's shopping trips, or a late model low mileage family car, your DeSoto Plymouth dealer can serve you. He has used cars for every purse and purpose. So if you're in the market for a good used car at a really fair price, you'll be wise to hurry to your nearby DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And when you're there, Look for the used cars bearing this TV sticker. TV stands for top value. Remember, your DeSoto Plymouth dealer is the only place in town where you can get top value used cars. When you buy a used car from your DeSoto Plymouth dealer, you can be sure you're getting the best possible car value. You're getting a car backed by a new car dealer, by an established businessman in your community. So, for the lowest prices, the easiest terms, see the top value used cars in town. Visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealer first thing tomorrow. And when you're buying that TV top value used car from your DeSoto Plymouth dealer, tell them Groucho sent you. Now's the time to buy, so see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. George, who's next? Well, Groucho, we invited some women who work for a specialty store to the program tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mrs. Ruth Mitchell and her partner, Mr. Paul Searles, as an interesting occupation. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Mrs. Ruth Mitchell, that, that's you. Uh, where, where are you from? I'm Magnet Company at, uh, in Los Angeles. Oh, Magnets, huh? You were born in Magnet's department store? <laughs> I didn't know they delivered, huh? <laughs> You were born in the infants department, huh? I, I meant, uh, where were you? Where are you from originally? Well, I came here from Denver. Uh, Denver. When I was three years old. Is that so? Mm -hmm. By yourself? <laughs> no, with my mother. Oh. Where was your father while all this went on? Well, he had come on ahead. Oh, I see. Huh? Do you do you have a husband? Yes, I do. We do. Well, you very Been lucky. married to him for 31 years. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, you don't look old enough to. Uh, oh, I'm a I grandmother. I thought you were 31. You were a grandmother. Uh-huh. I have three grandchildren. Is that so? Paul uh, Sales, huh? Where's your home, Paul? In Washington. Washington? Another homeless Democrat, eh? <laughs> oh, in the state of Washington. Oh, well, Washington's in an awful state right now. <laughs> What part of Washington are you from? From Toodle, Washington. Uh, I beg your pardon, what was that again? From Toodle. Well, why do you toodle? There's nobody on the track here. Please. Nobody's toodled at me for years, you know. Well, stop toodling, Paul, and tell me, tell me where you're from. Huh? I'm from Toodle. We have a population up there of about 50 men and hundreds and thousands of deer and elk and game. What, what sort of work do you do up there? I work for Warehouse Timber Company. I'm in the saw sharpening department. Saw sharpening? That's right. We sharpen the saws to cut the trees with. Oh. Is that a pretty big outfit, the uh, Weyerhauser or whatever? It's, it's one of the biggest in the world. Is that so? Never heard of them, huh? <laughs> you haven't heard much. No. <laughs> you know, there's a quiz later, you know. <laughs> You're jeopardizing this woman's grandchildren, huh? Eh? Don't ask 
tell you, uh, why do you keep cutting the trees down if you're so crazy about them? Riddle me that. Oh, so you'll have a chair to sit on? <laughs> well, I have a chair to sit on. Why do you have to keep on cutting the trees down? Well, you've got to have a house to live in. You've got to have paper to read. You've got to have doors, windows, everything that's made out of wood. You've got to have them. If it wasn't for that, you wouldn't have all these articles. I live in a cave. <laughs> You've got to have a door. We'll make a wooden door for it. No, I use a rock at the front door. <laughs> and I write hieroglyphics on the on the wall, on the stone. After a while, I'll show you my basket, huh? <laughs> not, not you. I'm talking to Paul. <laughs> you keep out of this. You're a grandmother. <laughs> well, you may be a lumberjack, old boy, but I, I'm far from stumped. <laughs> now, what are you doing for conservation? Isn't well, it true that our forests are being denuded? No, it's right. not. It is not. Absolutely not, not. We are going all out for conservation. We plant trees as we cut them. The wind blows the seed all over. What do you mean? You plant the same tree that you cut? <laughs> no, no. We plant seeds or natural reforestation is, comes from the seed of trees that are still standing. We oh. cut in blocks. We'll leave a block of timber standing and that will be reforested on what we have cut. If that doesn't do the job, the squirrels, they help us out. They'll go out and pack a little seed around and dig down and bury it so they'll have something next winter. Sometimes they forget it, and that grows into a tree. A squirrel grows into a tree? <laughs> well, I don't think so, but his seed does. Oh. And they think those squirrels are nuts, huh? Uh, right. <laughs> and we can't get them growing that way. Why, we go out and send a crew out. We raise little seedlings. We send a crew out, and they plant these one at a time all over the sacred that doesn't seed naturally. Are you pretty handy with a saw? Oh, I think so. I've held the world championship with a hand saw for the last 21 years. Wait a minute. Got some... <laughs> I happen to have some here for just the, such an The duck has been playing the market and it and is broke, so Fenneman uh, luckily had some money left over from Stanford University. <laughs> And he won in a crooked football bet, so here's fifty dollars for you and fifty Thank for you, you Paul. Gotcha. You said the secret word. I forgot what was it. Hand. What was it? Hand. 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 Oh, I Hand. Well, congratulations. <laughs> well, tell us about this saw thing, huh? You say you won the world championship with a hand saw? That's right. Well, oh, that that's quite an achievement, isn't it, huh? Well, uh, we think so. That is our How long does it take to saw one of those big logs in two? And what is the circumference of one of those logs? My best record this year was on a 30-inch log. It took me one minute and 17 seconds to cut that in half. You saw it in, uh, in one minute and 15 seconds? One minute and 17 seconds. Oh. I saw it a pussy cat the other day. Huh? <laughs> well, Paul, I'm, I'm glad to know that the big lumber companies are doing something to preserve the forest for the future. Because I'm very much interested in conservation myself. That's right. And uh, it's a very important part of our whole heritage, and we should take good care of it. But the time has come to play your bet your life. Now, you win more than our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the big money. In the race for the $1,500, Lieutenant and Mrs. Pusis won $90. And the secret word is hand. Now, let's see how much money you can make. Uh, you selected the animal kingdom, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. We start you off with a hundred dollar bankroll, and when you miss a question, you lose half of whatever you've got. Sixty? Sixty. Sixty. All right. What is the name of the small lizard that is able to change its color to match its surroundings? Beetle monster? Chameleon. Oh. Talk it over. Chameleon. Oh, well, that's right. Chameleon, I think, Chameleon. is the way it's called. You know, I have one hundred and sixty dollars. Now, you can stop any time you want, and you don't have to go ahead, you know. And remember, this time before you talk up, one answer between you. Okay. Or I may have to chop you down. What is a 70, did you say? All right, what is another name for the one humped camel? A dromedary? That's right, a dromedary is right. You now have $230. You can quit? You can go ahead. 80? Okay, what is the word for the young of geese? What are baby geese called? Gosling. Gosling's is right. You now have $310. You better go 100. 100? All right, what kind of animal is a merino? M-E-R-I-N-O. Come 
Come on, time's a waste. If you don't know, take rat? a guess. It's a, a reptile rat. No, oh, it's I... a sheep. Sheep? Oh. Yes. Well, well, you lost half of your bankroll, so you wind up with one hundred and fifty-five dollars. Well, that's not too bad. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth deal. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> Well, Groucho, uh, we have an Irish housewife and a man with an interesting occupation for you now, and they're coming in right now, I believe. Mrs. Abby Donovan and Mr. Ward Kimball, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word, and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, uh, something you see every day. <laughs> Mrs. Uh, Abby Donovan, you're the Irish housewife, eh? That's right, Groucho. Uh, which part of Brooklyn are you from? Uh... Well, I'm from County Cork, Ireland. You're from County Cork, huh? Eh? Well, I haven't pulled one of those out of a bottle in a long time. <laughs> How long since you left the old sod? Well, it's about um, 30 years. 30 years, huh? Mm -hmm. How old were you when you left? Ooh. I was a little girl, Groucho. Full of the old Irish blonde, yeah. I've got a little Irish in me myself, you know, huh? Eh? I had an Irish stew for lunch today. <laughs> Let's see, who, who are you again? Uh, um, no, uh, what is your name? Uh, uh, Ward Kimball. Ward Kimball. Uh, where, where are you from, uh, Ward? Originally from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh -huh. <laughs> Somebody out there from Jacksonville, huh? <laughs> Why did you leave Minneapolis? Well, it got too cold for us, so we came to California. Well, I came to California because it got too hot for me. <laughs> <laughs> who do you work for, Ward? Walt Disney. You work for Disney? Oh, I thought your face was familiar. <laughs> Are you the duck or the mouse? No, I'm a, an animator and director out there. Oh, a director? Oh, so you'll direct, keep my mouth shut. I may want a job out there. If you ever need a rat, why, give me a ring. Huh? <laughs> Do you have any uh, hobbies, Mr. Kimball? Uh, what does a cartoonist do in his spare time? Well, one of my hobbies, Groucho, is trains. Trains, huh? Well, electric or a wind-up? Uh... <laughs> no, I have three full-size Baldwin locomotives and four big coaches. In the house? In my backyard. You must have a pretty big backyard, huh? Well, not too big. It's about three acres. <laughs> well, you say you have uh, steam engines out there or diesel engines? No, don't say diesel. Uh, steam engines? Steam, yeah. Well, yes. can you go to Chicago? <laughs> No, uh, my railroad uh, is only 650 feet long. Well, what's the idea of having a full-size railroad that won't go to Chicago? I don't understand that. Well, I, I tell you, um, this railroad has a roundhouse, and it has a water tank and depot, few hand cars, and... Uh, <laughs> No. <laughs> Good thing Simon is wealthy. You said hand, that's the secret word, so you get fifty dollars. And uh, the little lady gets fifty dollars. Donald Duck. Yes, that's uh, the replica. <laughs> well, uh, tell us about the, your railroad award. How did you happen to buy this stuff? Well, I heard that one of the railroads was selling one of its uh, second hand passenger coaches, which was forty feet long for 50 bucks, and uh, so I bought it. You see, I can't resist a bargain. That's Wouldn't it be cheaper to just uh, go on the train and go to Chicago and then have all this stuff in the backyard? Well, um, how much money have you got tied up in this uh, folly out there in the backyard? Huh? Well, I paid $400 for the big locomotive. That's 40 feet long, and I paid... You know what? You can go to Chicago in the Santa Fe for about $70. <laughs> It's the second biggest city in the United States. <laughs> and they've got a magnificent shorefront there with the lake there, and there are yachts there, and there's all kinds of uh, cultural advantages in Chicago. There's the Field Museum, there's the wonderful department store. I think you're very foolish to keep riding around that backyard. <laughs> you don't meet anybody, do you? Well, a few, about 50 kids usually when we steam up. Well, do you know how many children there are in Chicago? <laughs> thousand children in Chicago. <laughs> well, what else did you have in your backyard? You have a few old lighthouses out there in case it rains? No, I have a big collection of fire engines. Uh -huh. And 
In fact, I have lots... What would you think of going to Chicago on a fire engine? <laughs> I went to San Diego once. In, on the fire engine? 19... Now, didn't you like that better than the backyard? I thought it was wonderful. They have a wonderful zoo down there in San Diego. You can see a lot of things if you get out of the back of the house. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do for excitement in the... Now, you have a full-size railroad. I play the trombone. <laughs> I was only trying to be funny. Don't pay attention to me. Do you play in a band or do you play for the amusement of the neighbors? Well, well, I assume by this time I've fairly decided opinions about you. <laughs> How early do you run these trains in the backyard? <clears throat> Once a month. Well, now, uh, you say you're a trombone player? Yes. You, you play it on the train, or...? Uh... No, I play with a jazz band. I'm the leader and first trombonist of the Firehouse 5 plus 2. <laughs> That's a very famous musical outfit, isn't it? Why do you call it the Firehouse 5 plus 2? I never did understand that. Because there's seven of us. <laughs> you know, and everybody thought the Marx Brothers were crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to pursue this conversation. <laughs> the time has come to, to make some money. In the race for the $1,500, the lumberjack and his partner are leading with $155. Now, uh, let's see how much money you can make. You selected a movie quiz. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. All you have to do is beat our other couples, and you get a chance at the big money. And you can quit any time you want, or if you think you have more than the other couple. How about now? <laughs> <laughs> you can even quit now if you want. <laughs> oh, you oh, don't forget, you have a starting with a bankroll of $100. I'll stay. That's your nest egg. <laughs> All right, now, what question do you want? A $10 one, 60, 80, 100? Take your choice. Well, I think we'll start about halfway, 50 halfway. bucks. All right, Olivia de Havilland has an equally famous sister. What is her name? Um, Talk it over. Remember your partners. Well, let's see. Um, maybe the, um, well, I know it. She's a... Right. Yeah. Well, it's Joan Fontaine. Oh, yeah. And if you just got out of that backyard once in a while, <laughs> you can't pick up things like Joan Fontaine riding around a fake engine in a backyard. <laughs> I tried it. Now what do you want to go for? You lost half your bank, well, you now have $50. Boy, my kids are going to sure laugh at me. <laughs> I hope they laugh at me. <laughs> they don't, I'm in a fine fix. Forty dollars. Who played the monster in Frankenstein? Boris Carlo. That's right, Boris Carlo. You now have ninety dollars. You now have ninety dollars. And what do you wish to try? We'll take a crack at that sixty one. You take a crack at the sixty one? Yeah. <laughs> it is very nice. Uh, Walter Disney. Oh, you dirty crook. <laughs> I won't know the answer. <laughs> Walt Disney made a feature feature length cartoon that included such characters as Jiminy Cricket, Figaro, and Stromboli. Figaro! What was the name of this picture? That's so easy, I hate to mention it. Pinocchio. Uh, Pinocchio is right. <laughs> you now have $150. You have $150. Do you wish to continue or do you wish to cease? Let's try that uh, $70. Mm -hmm. 70 dollars 70 Blake Lancaster made a picture that was filmed in the Fiji Islands. What is the name of it? Talk it over. Crazy time. Crimson Park. No, His Majesty O'Keefe. And you wind up with seventy-five dollars. What do you mean? Is that the last one? Yes. Well, land sakes. Well, thanks and good luck from the Discovery Limited. <laughs> That means that the lumberjack and his partner with $155 in just one minute get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. Here are two ruts. They run about the width of a car's wheel apart and are about a foot deep. Now we're going to drive this brand new DeSoto automatic in and out of these ruts. Look at that. Terrific deep ruts at high speed and yet the driver is able to keep complete and perfect control of the car. How is he able to steer? Simple. DeSoto full-time power steering is doing all the work of turning the wheel for him. 
just like that. And the DeSoto Automatic is climbing in and out of those deep ditches as though they don't exist. What's more, there's no effort in holding the wheel because DeSoto full-time power steering is cushioning it, stopping that troublesome road shock before it starts, giving the driver feather-like perfect control of the car, even in deep ruts at high speed. Another fact. DeSoto full-time power steering works for you all the time, at any speed. DeSoto full-time power steering does the work of turning the wheel for you. Next time you get behind the wheel of your car, remember this demonstration. DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America, who also bring you the outstanding new dramatic program, Medallion Theater, presented over another television network. George Fenneman signing off with a reminder from the National Safety Council. Traffic control begins at your wheel. That's me. Well, here I am again with $2,500 for one of our couples. And if any of them say the secret word... <laughs> the secret word, boys, will fly down and pay him $100. The word tonight is door. George Fenneman, who's supposed to try for the $2,500? Well, uh, just before we went on the air, we asked if there were any young single people present tonight. And our studio audience selected um, Miss Nina Kramer, Mr. Clarence Allen. And here they are. Folks, come on in here and meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And you say the secret word, you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. You're both single, eh? And we'd like to get married someday. Miss uh, Nina, Ni is that the way Nina. you pronounce it? Nina? Mm -hmm. Oh, I used to know a tenor named Nina. <laughs> uh, where, are you, where are you from, Nina? I'm originally from Chicago. Uh-huh. How originally were you in Chicago? <laughs> Nineteen years ago. Nineteen years ago? Then you've been here about two years, is that right? No, I've been here about ten years. Oh, you're not 29, are you? <laughs> Now you've got me confused. No, I'm 19. You left Chicago 19 years ago and you're 19 years old? No, I was 19. How did you I come out? By bassinet? <laughs> <laughs> would, you, would you mind repeating that whole thing again? How old well, are you? I'm 19. 19? Yes. How long uh, since you left Chicago? Oh, uh, about 10 years. Oh, I see. That would make you 14 years old. You can leave it at that. Okay, leave it. And uh, what's your hometown, uh, Sonny Boy? Clarence? I'm from Claremont, California. Claremont? Claremont. I thought that was in Oklahoma. Not the one in California. Probably not. And I guess the one in Oklahoma is not the same one that's in California. That's where Will Rogers comes from, you know. Oh, he does? Claremont, yeah. See, now you've learned something tonight. That'll cost you three dollars. <laughs> what, what is your age, Clarence? I'm 25. What kind of work do you do, Clarence? I'm a geologist. Don't change the subject. I asked you what kind of work. <laughs> well, a geologists are really doing a wonderful work these days. Now, what do they do? <laughs> oh, we study rocks, hunt for minerals, hunt for oil, hunt for anything valuable in the Earth's surface. You actually look for rocks, is that it? That's right. Just wanted to be sure, in this program, we never take anything for granted, you know. <laughs> Stop groaning, it's free, you know this. 
Nobody forced you to come down here. I could have used all your tickets. Tonight. Now, as a mining engineer, what would you say is the most valuable mineral? I'd say coal. You would, huh? I hate to bring a girl a wedding ring made out of coal. <laughs> How about uranium? Do you ever look for that? Oh, yes, we look for uranium, although it's scarce enough around here, so normally it's only when we're looking for some other mineral as well. You mean if you want to find uranium, you have to look for something else? <laughs> well, that's what we do, yes. That's kind of ridiculous. Why don't you start out looking for uranium? And then maybe you'd find coal. <laughs> Now, uh, Clarence, you're a nice guy, and I like you, and I want to see you and, and Nina well provided for in your married life. I'll tell you what you do. You give me a dollar, and I'll tell you where you can find uranium. Okay? No. I know where I can find uranium myself. Oh, you do, huh? I do, too, in the dictionary, and that's an old gag. <laughs> What sort of work do you do? I'm a librarian. A librarian? Really? Is that so? I didn't realize librarians came this young. Oh, well, there are lots of young girls in libraries. Aren't you unusual? What's that? There are lots of young girls in libraries. Oh, is that so? <laughs> I guess I'll have to start reading again. I used to belong to the crook of the month. Is that... Uh... <laughs> Now, what, what library do you work for? The Beverly Hills Public Library. Really? I, I live in Beverly Hills. I don't think I've been there. <laughs> Where is it located? Well, it's in the city hall, uh, right next to the police station. <laughs> well, I've been there, all right. <laughs> On the other hand, maybe it was the library. As I recall, they booked me at the time. <laughs> See how well you work together as a team. Now, in just one minute, you're going to play, you bet your life, for a chance at $2,500. But first, there's something I want you to pay close attention to. It'll prove invaluable in your marriage. You selected animals and nursery rhymes. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Eighteen. Eighteen. Sounds good. Eighteen. Uh -huh. All right. What kind of a pet did old Mother Hubbard have? A dog. A dog is correct. <laughs> You're on your way. You have $38. Remember, you're going for $2,500 tonight. Now, how much of the $38 are you going to bet on this one? $36. $36. <laughs> what ran after the farmer's wife? Three blind mice. Three blind mice. That's right. I can say you are doing mighty well. You have $74. $74. Here's your third question. How much are you going to go for? Seventy. Seventy-three. Seventy-three. <laughs> What did Bo Peep tend? Sheep. Sheep is right. Sheep at half the price. Sheep at half the price. I guess there's nothing there. You have $147. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much are you going to bet? $147. How does that say? How much have they got? $147 is in the whole thing. Okay, whole okay. thing. What did Tom the Piper's son swipe? Pig. The pig, the pig. is right. wind up with a grand total of $294. We're back to the Army officers for the program tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Major Crossley. His partner is a housewife from the audience, Mrs. Sylvia Sparks. Folks, come out here and meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome to your Bet Your Life. Uh, say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Mrs. Uh, Sylvia Sparks, uh, you're, you're the housewife, huh? Yes. You look like you could give off many sparks. Uh. <laughs> I used to wonder who was Sylvia. <laughs> Where are you from, Syl? New York. You from New York? Yes. Uh-huh. What does your husband do? He's a mechanical engineer at Norris Stamping and Manufacturing Company. And uh, Major Ross Crosley, uh, what is your hometown, Major? My home is uh, Columbus, Ohio. Are you married, Major? Yes, sir. Very much so. Did you volunteer or were you drafted? <laughs> sir, I, I volunteered. Should have married the Army. After 20 years, the Army gives you a pension. <laughs> How long have you been married, Sylvia? Four months. Four months, huh? Eh? First time out? Yeah. <laughs> What 
they say at the racetrack, it's good enough for me. Huh? You've been married four months, huh? Now, how long have you been married, Major? Uh, I notice you have some decorations on. Is that from the marriage? Or... Uh, no, I've been married. Distinguished service at home in the kitchen? Uh, no. Uh, Groucho, I've been married for uh, 13 years. Now, which branch of the service are you in? Uh, I'm in the quartermaster corps. Now, uh, what do you do as a quartermaster? Well, uh, we, uh supervise the procurement of uh, perishable foods for the armed forces. Well, like what, for example? Well, what kind like of supplies uh, you uh, meats and dairy products and uh, fresh fruits and vegetables, eggs, butter. Uh, well, do you we, pay retail or wholesale prices? Well, we, we uh, pay wholesale prices. Uh, we can't afford to, to pay uh, retail prices because we buy in such large volumes. I buy in small quantities, and I can't afford to pay retail prices. <laughs> and when you buy in such large quantities, how do you know you're not getting stung? We uh, have everything inspected, uh, uh, Groucho. Uh, if we, uh, for example, if, if we buy meat, why, we have uh, the veterinarian inspect all of it. So where do you buy your meat, Santa Anita? <laughs> We buy our meat in the manner, uh, as I just told you, from the packing houses and, and so forth. Now, suppose you buy a carload of strawberries. Do you turn the train over to see if the bad ones are on the bottom? Uh, no, we... Uh, How do you know that all well, the strawberries uh, are going to be good? We have, uh, we have inspectors uh, look at the strawberries. What are they? Are they on the bottom of the car? Well, they don't turn the whole bottom over, but they may pick a crate here and a crate there, and, and sometimes they look on the bottom, too. Well, by the way, as a quartermaster, would you say the army travels on its stomach? Yes, uh, definitely, yes. The must army be travels. quite a sight after a 20-mile hike. <laughs> All those soldiers soaking their tired stomachs in a bucket of warm water. <laughs> All right, now, suppose you're buying meat for your own home. Uh, what do you look for? You, you, Mrs. Sparks. The butcher. <laughs> Uh, there's one butcher I usually go to. Oh, you look at the butcher face, huh? I ask him. Mr. Sparks, Uncle Sam needs you. <laughs> if there were more women like you in the service, the army would stop traveling on the stomach. They'd get up on their toes and follow you. <laughs> well, I've learned a lot about shopping tonight. Now, let's see if you two can win a little grocery money. You might win $2,500. Run you $20 into more than our other couples. I can't tell you how much our first couple won, but Fenneman's off stage remind our listeners. The librarian and the engineer won $294. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You select the George Washington as your subject. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? 15. Let's make it 15. 15. 15? What is the name of George Washington's home? Mount Vernon. Mount Vernon is correct. $35. You'd have missed that major, you'd have been drummed out of the army. Huh? <laughs> Remember, you're going for $2,500 tonight. Now, how much of the 35 are you going to go for? Oh, we'll go for 20. 20? Is that all right, Mrs. Yes. Sparks? What's the first name of George Washington's wife? Martha. Martha is right. <laughs> you're now at $55. She said he had a lot of candy stores at one time. Yeah. <laughs> Here's your third question. How much of the 55 are you going to bet? And we bet it all. You're going to bet the 55. All right, where did Washington's army spend the bitter winter of 1777? Valley Forge. Valley Forge, you're right. Now you have $110. You've got $110, and this is your last chance to beat the others. Now, how much are you going to bet? 90. 90, is that all right, um, Sylvia? In what state was George Washington born? Virginia. Virginia is correct. Put it down, Major. Okay. Sylvia, you did a fine job. And you wind up yep, with a grand total. all through this thing. Now, you too, fellas. <laughs> you wind up with a grand total of $200, and thank you very much. Uh, Groucho, yeah? the uh, secret word is still door. Talk slow, like it'll drag at this. All right. I uh, was going to say that we invited some girl swimmers to the program tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Norma Welts. Her partner is a sculptor, Mr. Yuka Salomunic. And here they are. Welcome, folks, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dailers. Over here, Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. A girl swimmer and a sculptor, eh? Uh, Norma Wells, is, is it? That's right. Uh -huh. 
Yucca Salamunich? That's right. That's a very famous name. I've often seen it in the menu at the Brown Davy. <laughs> Some kind of an hors d'oeuvre, aren't you? Uh... No, I'm a sculptor. Uh, oh, a sculptor. Huh? Oh. That's quite a jump from hors d'oeuvres. Huh? How did you ever get a name like Yucca Salamunich? Just like you did. My parents give it to me. As far as I know, your parents didn't even know me. <laughs> now, what does your name mean in the Brown Day? I mean... Uh... It means salt of Munich. It means what? Salt of Munich. Salt of Munich? That's right. Oh. Now, where are you from, Mr. Salomir? I was born in Yugoslavia. Why did you come to California? Uh, my doctor advised me to get rid of my sinus trouble I have. And did you get rid of your sinus? You get worse than that. You say you didn't get rid of your sinus? No. It's worse than before. <laughs> This is a good thing you came to California. <laughs> At least you did get rid of your doctor. <laughs> could you could you sound off in Yugoslavian, uh, Yaka? Sure. Uh, I speak it very well, you know. Go ahead, say yes, something. Ti imaš veoma dobru glavu. Oh, you're a southern uh, Jew. <laughs> okay, I give up. What did you say? You have very interesting head. It's really nothing. As a matter of fact, it is nothing. I've seen better heads on a glass of beer. Are you married, Yuck? Yeah. I'll call you Yuck. We get familiar very swiftly on this show. You, you're married, uh, Yuck? Yeah. How'd, how'd you meet your wife? Well, she used to come to my classes, where I used to lecture in the sculpturing, you know, on sculpturing. Oh, you were a lecturer? Lecturing. Oh, a lecturer. <laughs> Teaching. Oh, I don't hear very well. I, I don't either. <laughs> and how did you meet her? She was sitting in the audience? And yes, I was She was, was spellbound at your lecture? She was not spellbound, but uh, I kind of... Uh, she was attracted to me, you see, and... Uh, I have fallen, fallen in love with her nose. You fell in love with her nose? That's right. <laughs> Did she have it with her? <laughs> yes. Particularly her left nostril. And you you fell in love with her left nostril. <laughs> what was the matter with the right one? And what happened? You, uh, you walked up to her after the lecture? Yeah. And what did you say to her? I told her I liked you nose. Of no, course. this isn't your wife. You're a little... <laughs> Now, Norma, that's a very pretty name, Norman. You're a Thank very you. pretty girl. Huh? Thank you. Have you always been this pretty? Well, I guess so. <laughs> You're a swimmer. Huh? Do you swim for a living? No, uh, I'm a low freshman at SC. What kind of course are you taking there? Three points of the starboard? No, elementary education. Oh. How old, how old are you? Eighteen. Eighteen, huh? Are you being rushed by any of the fraternities at school? No, you mean sororities. Fraternities don't rush women. <laughs> Things have certainly changed since I went to school. We used to rush anything. <laughs> Mr. Salomunic, haven't you got a nickname? Uh, what'll I call you? You don't want me to call you Yuck, huh? Call me Yuck or George. <laughs> I like it Let's talk about sculpturing. Uh, how, do, how did you acquire this skill? Well, first I was born. Well, then that's I went, reasonable, I believe. Then I went to a famous academy to study. And then? And then I became a sculptor. Well, how did you decide to become a sculptor? I kind of like it, appeal to my sense. I study uh, technical things about sculpture, history of art, and anatomy. Well, I've studied anatomy, but I doubt if I could ever be a sculptor. <laughs> However, I'm uh, told I'm a pretty good chiseler. <laughs> now, do, you, do you think that uh, Norma here would make a good statue? I think she would. Are you looking at her nostril, or are you just... <laughs> well, I'm looking at her uh, interesting head. She has a very fine proportion head. Very beautiful... Uh, 
No. Steady there, Yuck. <laughs> now, when you see a beautiful woman, uh, what's the first thing an artist like yourself looks for? What a ridiculous I question. I look not to get I'm surprised they don't throw me out of here. I, uh, pardon me, I didn't hear what you said. I say I look at uh, eyes. You look at the eyes first? Yes. Yeah? Well, I can see I'd be a total loss as a sculptor. <laughs> uh, Norma, uh... Norma, close your eyes. Now, uh, uh, Yuck, you tell me the color of Norma's eyes. I don't know. I thought you just told me you always looked at a woman's eyes. Yeah, but I look at, uh, at her eyes, at the depth of her soul, of her emotion. <laughs> Beauty, inner beauty, you see what I mean? I know. Beauty is only skin deep, eh? And that's good enough for me. <laughs> Norma, you can open your eyes now. I put my mask back on. Now, Yuck, look into Norma's eyes and tell me, what does she look like inside? I think she has a very beautiful soul, no? <laughs> very fine expression, very depth. She's a okay. good person. I can okay. see it. I can you keep see looking it. on the inside, I'll keep looking on the outside. <laughs> now, Yuck, have you done any well-known people in bronze or stone? Yes. I did uh, oh. one of the President Roosevelt before President he died. Roosevelt? Well, you yes. must be very good, huh? I <laughs> I'll have more respect for you now. You did Roosevelt? Yes. And uh, how was he? Did he, was he quiet when he... It was very interesting. You see, during this uh, work, he asked me, he says, so what do you want me to do? I told him to keep his mouth closed, you see. And... Uh, Are you a Republican? <laughs> no. Uh, the next day, the newspaper misinterpreted my story, and they told him, I told him to keep his mouth shut. Of course, I didn't. I just told him to keep his mouth closed, because, you know, when you work, you have to keep his mouth closed, you know? I uh, want to tell you that we're honored to have you here. I had no idea that you were such a talented sculptor. Thank you. I thought you were one of those cheap guys that stood on Atlantic City on the beach or something. <laughs> now, Norma, what is your specialty as, as a swimmer? The uh, backstroke. The backstroke? Could, mm -hmm. could you give us uh, an example of the backstroke? Right here. Well, you. Why not? I haven't got any water. Is <laughs> Enough. It's not enough, huh? No. Is there any water in the audience? <laughs> well, just, just, just get us a kind of a, what they call a dry run. Okay. <laughs> like that. It's easy. The swim. And that's all you that's do? That's all you do and kick your feet. Don't you do? Huh? Kick your feet. Well, do it and kick your feet at the same time. <laughs> well, thanks to you two, I know all about swimming and sculpting, and if I ever decide I have my statue carved, I'll go jump in the lake. <laughs> Well, let's see how well you make out in the quiz. You run your $20 and the more than our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $2,500 question. Now, I can't tell you how much uh, our other couples won, but George Spenneman is off stage to remind our listeners. The librarian and the engineer are still ahead with $294. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected international landmarks. Here's your first question. How much of the 20 are you going to risk? Uh, 50. Fifteen? In what country do you find the pyramids? In Egypt. Egypt is right. And you're off to a good start. You have $35. You have $35. Remember, you're going for $2,500 tonight. Now, how much of the 35 are you going to bet on this? 30. Okay, 30. 30. In what country do you find the Louvre? L-O-U-V-R-E. Louvre in France. In France, in France is right. <laughs> now you have $65. $65. How much are you going to bet this time? We bet 60. Okay, 60. Yuck is a real chiseler. Isn't <laughs> in what country do you find the leaning tower? In Pisa, Italy. In Italy is the right. <laughs> now you climb to $125. $125 is your last chance to be the other couples. How much are you going to go for? 120. 125 is that. Yeah, let's put the whole, the whole business. Don't kiss her, Yuck. Just talk <laughs> it over. Okay, How 125 is that. Let's put 125. Yeah. Okay. In what country do you find the Acropolis? In Greece. In Greece is right. <laughs> and you wind up with a grand total of $250. And that means the librarian and the geologist with $294 get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $2,500 question.
All right, now we find out you've been hanging around these books all these years. We find out if you really know anything. Here we go for $2,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you, so think carefully and please, no help from the audience. Here it is. If the President of the United States and the Vice President should both resign, who is next in line to succeed to the office of Chief Executive? The Secretary of State. He's saying Secretary of State and the Chief Justice. One answer between you. Talk it over. Talk it over. We want one answer between you. All right, what is the answer you two have decided upon? We'll say the Secretary of State. No, I, I'm sorry. According to law passed in 1947, the Speaker of the House of Representatives. <laughs> so that means the big question next week will be worth $3,000. Well, you lost the big money, but you won how much? $294. $294 in the quiz. Congratulations and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. <laughs>